right? Anyway, yeah, it took forever. Yep. Hey, there we go. <laughs> we all started talking and then it just didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. That was my fault. Yeah. <laughs> that was totally my fault. That was fun. That was great. All right. I have that button clicked and I have that button clicked, which means we should be on the air. <laughs> all right. Hey. Can someone confirm? <laughs> Are we there? Oh, someone said hi. So I guess uh, I guess that means we're on there. I, I think we're on. All right. Okay. Okay, good. Welcome to Talking Heads, everyone. Episode 186, your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm Steve. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday night or in podcast form on Anchor.fm or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. If you've never seen the show before, we talk beer, we talk tech, we talk games, pop culture, entertainment, sometimes some Star Trek. This is a PG-13 show in both language and content, and all Super Chats are read on the air so long as they meet those criteria. And if you want to join the Super Secret Chat and the even more Super Secret After Party, think about joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are both down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself, John, Rhett, Steve, all the hosts from Talking Heads, and keep the conversation going there all week long. Now, when you say PG-13, do you mean like 90s PG-13 or today's PG-13? I mean like... Because uh, like in the 90s, some of the PG-13 movies did have some topless scenes in it. I'm just saying. I'm, yeah. I could go topless, technically, if they're, you say PG-13. Yeah, we're, we're more like... We're, we're 90s PG-13... Uh, broadcast television, not network. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's fine. <laughs> UK or US? Uh, US. US. Oh, okay. okay. Still can't so, go top listen. Uh, adult themes occasionally, but yeah. nothing explicit. Yeah. That's my fault. Well, I guess drinking. <laughs> yeah. That's adult themed, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I decided to start calling it PG-13 because I think that's a much more accurate representation of what mm -hmm. the show is yeah. than family friendly because... Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so I hit the pop filter in my face. Uh, yeah, it's just more representative of what we do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, how's it going, Steve? Good, good. I just got back from uh, my week-long trip to Denver, Denver area. Excellent. So that was really good. Got to got to visit a lot of breweries, a lot of breweries. Nice. So I, don't, I think I, I didn't even count. It must have been like in the dozen or plus, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, had a good time. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of what that. Uh, 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 oh, Big Lebowski. Uh, the the bad voiceover dubs from broadcast television in the '90s. You ever fight oh, yeah. a man in the Alps? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it? The Die Hard Two one was was Yippee Kaye, Mister Falcon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what we are that's the yeah. level of pg-13 we are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh no that's cool um i've actually never been to colorado i've, no, I've it's never nice. even been to the airport on a layover like, uh -huh. like i've been that direction multiple times but yeah the the denver airports where they got that famous uh devil horse statue out front the mm -hmm. giant blue horse on its hind legs and it's got glowing <laughs> red eyes yeah it's like what the heck dude it's all demonic looking. It's like something you fight in World of Warcraft or something. Ah, it's just weird looking. <laughs> I mean, it's cool, but I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. Like you put it in an airport. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's some questionable decisions by airports yeah. sometimes when it comes to <laughs> architecture and art. And, uh, and always, you know, the Portland airport carpets that they always pick, it's always questionable. Yeah. <laughs> so questionable it becomes famous, right? Like right. so bad it becomes famous. I, I love the Portland carpet. I, it was so bad that it was it was great. It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, the room of of carpets, <laughs> the movie The Room. You know, it's so bad it's good. Yeah. Or the shark, the Sharknado of carpets. Shark, yeah, the Sharknado of carpets. The Sharknado of carpets. More apt to describe yeah. it. All right, uh, boy, it is Wednesday, and I could absolutely open a beer. Oh yes, uh, and it's so hot, man. Yeah. I'm going for. I'm not going for any. I'm, I'm not going for any of the big stouts. I just nothing can't super do it today. heavy. I I even bought a couple of uh, of good stouts. Uh, mm -hmm. Gosh, was that Sunday? I think uh, mm -hmm. Sunday. I I went to a tap house for the first time in well over a year. Yeah. Oh nice. Uh, I had my first flight for probably close to two years. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a lot of fun. But uh, they had some bottles for sale there. Uh, picked up a couple. Um, Gosh, I don't even remember what they were now, but they're like 
fourteen percent imperial stouts, mm-hmm. diff- different levels of barrel aging, and, and mm-hmm. it's like, man, that sounds really good in a week or so. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's that's one of the big places I wanted to hit um, because the wedding was up in Fort Collins, uh-huh. and along the way is Boulder, Colorado, which yeah. is where Avery is. Yeah. So we stopped off at Avery. We, we uh, spent the night. We, we got I got a hotel specifically <laughs> next to Avery because you know what Avery's famous for yeah. is their big giant sixteen percent plus beers. <laughs> <laughs> and I went there and sampled them all. Oh. I tried them all. <laughs> oh. all, all of them that they had on tap. I pretty much had all of them. You do not want to know how big of a bill I paid at Avery, but it was worth it. It yeah. was it was probably one of one of my top ten best brewery experiences yeah uh, uh me and me and my brother-in-law we got two flights and i think it cost us 28 bucks and, and yeah. there were some good good beers on there mm-hmm. um yeah there was one i don't remember who made this one but it was a little bit of a swing and a miss it was a brandy barrel aged cider uh, okay and uh it sounded pretty intriguing and it was the most mm-hmm. expensive beer on their list uh really? and uh but they they ended up using a very dry cider, which did not pair well with a very syrupy, thick, molassesy brandy that hmm. they that they aged it with. And so you could taste like a little bit of the brandy oakiness to it, and then nothing. <laughs> it just it just muted hmm. out everything from the apple. Hmm. It, it was like a hmm. it was like a carbonated but muted brandy. It was oh, that's really kind of terrible. terrible. <laughs> yeah. I actually had something pretty interesting uh, it was in Colorado. $7 too. for 4 ounces. <laughs> ah, what a waste. Yeah. No, I had I they had uh bourbon barrel aged coffee. Cold pressed coffee, bourbon barrel aged cold pressed coffee. Nice. That was pretty good. Nice. I kind of liked it. What do you got on tap tonight? Tonight I got um well since I was in Colorado, I got I brought on a couple of uh Colorado beers. And since I was in Avery, I have pear of peaches it is a pear and peach hazy ipa and uh this one is actually nine percent it's actually well, of course like avery doesn't do anything small right so even their ipas are giant and this is from another uh, brewery in uh colorado that um I think this was in um this one was also in, in boulder and i don't know if it's vhl or uhl i'm pretty sure it's vhl VHL's uh, Comet Hop Down. This is another hazy IPA. And um, bucking the trend of going to a Colorado brewing, I'm taking one from Crux. I just liked this can because it's a party of clowns. Oh, I like that. Yeah. (laughs) That's an interesting can for Crux. Yeah, I know, right? They're usually very plain with just kind of like some kind of border texture on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is like uh, just... Yeah, like a nightmare kids yeah, party. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, um, I got a couple of pints, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm sending all the good vibes that I can uh, over towards Damian Lillard because I don't know if anyone watched the game last night, but holy crap, it was him against everyone else, and he was still winning for <laughs> for most of the game. <laughs> Fifty five points, ten assists, uh, lost in double overtime. I think Dame scored the last twenty points or something yeah. like that, with the exception of Simons hitting a three and and someone else hitting a pair of three throws. But yeah, it was a gutsy gutsy hit two game tying shots with less than five seconds to go uh, in the fourth quarter and and first mm-hmm. overtime. Uh, just and then they lost because no one else showed up and CJ (laughs) stepped out of bounds. Uh, Anyway, so I'm sending all the good vibes that I can, and it just so happens that I have a couple of cans here that kind of match the spirit. First off from Surly Brewing is uh, Damien Child of Darkness. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's 6.5% dark ale. Uh, And then I have, this one is from Jay Wakefield Brewing in Miami, and it is not, Mm. again, necessarily named for named for dame but it's dropping dimes which is one of his his songs yep. mm-hmm. uh so this is a double dry hopped eight percent ipa oh so, well, sounds good so yeah we're uh sending all the good vibes we can up to dame you've played a hell of a game and everyone else let you down so <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully fault? game six will go better <laughs> hopefully you can start out with that one huh like, I'm Cove- start up- like Covington won't try to dunk it twice with authority when you're down by two and rim it off the back twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Well, I'm going to start off with uh, Party of Clowns, I think. Yeah, I'm starting off with the Dark Ale. And yeah. that is a dark, dark ale. That is dark. Wow. Look at how thick that head is, too. Yeah. And for clarification, this is not a stout. This is an ale. No, it's a dark ale, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a dry harped a dry hopped black ale spawned uh, spawns from the usually discarded remnants of darkness. Flavors of roasted malt and dark brown sugar are suffocated by hop aromas reminiscent of tangerine and pine. Hmm. A tangerine tasting dark ale. Yeah. It could be interesting. All right. Oh, and I and I got my my Avery glass. Since I went to Avery. There's like gin on this. Is there really? Like they say uh tangerine and pine that's coming into my nose as as uh not a dry gin but a uh like a like a high botanical gin yeah, or like, a, yeah, yeah yeah um so not not your london dry more like your aviation uh, right more right. sprucey more more lemon peel and spruce right yeah but it, that's weird that my nose is totally going oh yeah that's just like a, a gin and tonic <laughs> Yeah, well, that's not bad, but it's kind of weird that it's dark. But right? it's a dark beer with a giant head on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's very good. It's, it's. I mean, it's like most hazies, very, yeah. very um, citrusy forward, kind of like, you know, citrus peel type flavors. Mm -hmm. Not too bitter, though, no. which is good. But uh, not the mouth feels a little weak because sometimes the the fluffy hazies that are kind of like kind of smooth and fluffy in your mouth, this mm -hmm. one's more just kind of straightforward. Nice. But still, it tastes good. Mm. That is pretty good. I have to say. I'm going to need a minute on that one. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm going to need a minute to sift through all of that. Um, anyway, we no, do have a fifteen dollar super chat uh, from oh, Mad Dog sixty huh? six. Uh, hey Jeff, my brother's wedding is this year, and I'm thinking of getting him a good whiskey, but don't know much. Any recommendations? Um, that all really depends on: is your brother into whiskey, and if so, what kind of whiskeys is he into? Uh, and also, what's your budget? Because a good whiskey can mean fifty dollars. A good whiskey can mean three hundred dollars. Um, I'm pretty well versed in the in the sub one hundred dollar category, sometimes up to one fifty, but that's that's a very rare occasion that I I spring for those. Um, for if he's into scotches, you could go with. Um, Something like a Glenlivet 18 would be a, a pretty mm. good middle of the road Scotch or a Highland Park. Uh, they've got a Highland Park 14 and a Highland Park 16, I believe. Um, that should be right in the 70 to 80 dollar price range. All of those bottles should be. Uh, those are pretty nice, approachable, drinkable Scotches. Uh, Jameson 18 or, or Jame mm -hmm. Jameson Gold are, are both some fantastic Irishes. Uh, as far as American whiskeys, um, see, some people are throwing out uh, Oban, Lafroy, Lagavulin, Lagavulin. <laughs> Lafroy. Um, uh, those, those to me, if if someone isn't doesn't love Scotch, and I mean yeah. love a deep peated, smoky, yeah. like burn the back of your mouth, I, burnt marshmallow Scotch. Right. It's not the bottle to get. I, um, I would I would definitely stay away from like high peaty scotches if they're not a big scotch fan. Exactly. Um I I like my scotches, but I don't like it peaty that much. <laughs> I I like some peat, but I, I'm yeah. definitely more of a Highland, less of an Isla. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, me too. Me too. Um but yeah, uh, yeah. What's funny is, and anytime you mention Scotch, people always bring out like the peatiest of the PDS. Like, oh, look, get, get a Lafroy or a uh, Lagavulin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I don't want my Scotches tasting like licking a campfire. It's just not, right, right. Yeah, so uh, so peaty. Yeah, and I I can appreciate them, but they're also not the bottle that I grab, and they're not the bottle that I try to introduce people to Scotch with. Yeah. Um, no band doesn't need thrown into the same category. You are correct there. I, yes. I, I overstepped with that one, but <laughs> um, but uh, and then as far as American whiskeys go, you can actually get really really solid American whiskeys, both rye and bourbon, um, mm -hmm. for the fifty to eighty dollar price point. Yeah. Uh, Whistle Pig Rye. They have a twelve year rye that's like forty five fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um you can go with the the bullet bourbon ten year or the bullet rye uh 
10 year, which are both uh, the Bullet 95s. Those are great $50 bottles that uh, are absolutely fantastic. So there you go. Yeah, I, I definitely like do like the rye, but I, I had actually, because my, my, my brother is also very much into his bourbons and whiskeys and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, and he lives in Colorado. <clears throat> when we went out there visit him, he had like this whole wall and, and we just sat there for like an hour tasting him. Yep. And my absolute favorite that he had was one called Eagle Rare. I don't know if you ever heard of it before. Yeah. It was it's it was it was absolutely delicious. I, I absolutely loved it. Um, I have to go see if I can get it around here, but I would recommend that one personally. I also got to try the one that's aged in the ships, or the one that they put the barrels on the ships so the natural rocking motion of the ocean helps mix the barrels. I guess is what, mm -hmm. the, what the idea is. Uh, I, I didn't really like it that much personally. I thought it was okay. Um, I don't know what the constant agitation did to it. It just tasted like just any other kind of whiskey that has, you know, variations in flavor and stuff like that. But yep. No, Eagle Rare is a great one. Um, Eagle Rare was awesome. Yeah. That, that's a, a very solid whiskey. Um, trying to think of any of the other like 50 to hundred dollar bottles that I've bought through the years. Um, oh, if you can find it, uh, I'm going to just type it into the uh, Rogue Stouted Thunder. Uh, it's, a, it's a whiskey that's made here by Rogue Ales and Spirits. They're a, oh, yeah. uh, a Newport, Oregon uh, distillery. Uh, they have two series. So they, they have a uh, their uh, Rolling Thunder Imperial Stout, which is a mm -hmm. phenomenal, what it's is really it, 11% uh, Imperial yeah, Stout? Yeah, pretty high. Yeah. Um, that they make there with all Oregon grain and everything else. Um, they also make their uh, their Rogue Spirits whiskey, uh, which is a fantastic American whiskey. Then they take those two and they will age their whiskey in the stout barrels and they will age the stout in the whiskey barrels. Um, and so you can get the, the Rolling Thunder uh, barrel aged stout and you can get the uh, Rogue Stouted Thunder whiskey. And the Stouted Thunder, uh, especially if you get the cask strength, although mm -hmm. if you're if he's not, again, not a huge fan of, of whiskey or doesn't know what he's doing, avoid mm -hmm. the cask strength. Yeah, um, it's pretty high. <laughs> but uh, but those, those usually run about $60 to $70. And they're a little bit more rare because Rogue doesn't distribute their, their spirits quite as far as their beer. Right. But uh, that is a fantastic bottle if you can track one down. I actually saw it uh, in, in Denver. The, the whiskey. Yeah, they had like seven or eight varieties uh, at the bottle shop that I go to uh, the, this uh, last week. Mm -hmm. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and get into some news. We've got a couple uh, couple quick stories and then we will jump into a Computex rewind uh, since pretty much the week is already done. Uh, it's amazing what happens when everything's digital. I know, <laughs> it goes fast. <laughs> Uh, so first up, uh, this one's just a little bit of a funny story. Uh, so some police in the UK were using uh, modern technology to track down uh, drug farms, to, to track down marijuana grows and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they came across one particular facility which had all of the hallmarks for a marijuana grow. Uh, it was a, in a industrial part of the city it's an old metal building that was leased out to, to someone. Uh, their power usage is through the roof. You can see the thermal signature from helicopters with, uh, with thermal imaging. Uh, I mean, that it's like, we had these guys dead to rights. We got a warrant. We're, we're in there for a drug bust. They open the doors and what they found was a also illegal crypto mining ring. <laughs> <laughs> No drugs, just crypto mining. No drugs, <laughs> just crypto. Um, yeah. So yeah, what they found was stacks and stacks and stacks of ASIC miners. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is... Uh, the funny thing is, like I said, it met all of the hallmarks of what they were looking right. for for a drug bust. Oh yeah. 
and the thing was, it's not that crypto mining is illegal in the UK or anything. It's that they were stealing power. Right. They were basically stealing power to mine the crypto because I think they were mining Bitcoin. And at this point, mm. Bitcoin, the, the cost to mine it is almost not uh, – it's not worth it because right. of the, the, the energy costs and, right. and you know what you get out of it. So they figured if they – steel power hat, hat, and and who knows where these asic miners came from yeah 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 exactly <laughs> it's just so shady uh no. so yeah so they were so they they shut it down because they were actually stealing power yeah so yeah go to bust one thing and you find another yep <laughs> always cracks me up just goes to show you if you just bust random warehouses you're gonna find something right right just, gonna find just something eventually. open the door <laughs> on this one that constantly changes hands for leaseholders yeah. and... <laughs> you guys do anything illegal in here you, you no? put your hand on the All door right. and it's like three degrees warmer than the door should be like, <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you got a bunch of colombians hanging out outside you never know <laughs> they're always doing <laughs> Uh, I was going to make a really inappropriate joke, but it would be beyond PG-13, <laughs> and I don't know that I could do it in translated form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ever fighting a man in the Alps? <laughs> it was Mr. Falcon. Yippee-ki-yay. Yeah. Yippee-ki-yay, Yippee 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 Mr. Falcon. Uh, so we talked about this very briefly last week, and we're going to talk mm -hmm. it ever so briefly again this week. Uh, Microsoft way to get your your foot into the news cycle uh yeah. last week they hinted that a brand new unveil of the biggest change to windows since windows right. 10 is coming mm -hmm. in the second half of 2021 uh and now we have a date for the announcement <laughs> which is on <laughs> june 24th yes uh microsoft will be holding a a press conference a virtual press conference uh on june 24th at 11 a.m eastern 8 pacific uh, because apparently we don't get to sleep in here mm -mm. and lunchtime on the East coast doesn't matter. Uh, so that's it. That's all we have. Yeah. Just to date. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of speculation. Um, cause I think we, we read an article previously or maybe it wasn't, maybe it was something that I read that I thought we were going to talk about, but, uh, there's going to be a, a fairly major UI upgrade from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what's been speculated anyway. Um, and I think they're still going to keep it Windows 10 because it's my understanding that Windows 10 was going to be more of a service. Yeah. But who knows? Uh, it's been five years since the initial release, and they've done their two uh, two updates per year, I think, pretty much, somewhat with a you know mixed rate of success. So I don't know if this is going to be an entirely new operating system that people have to purchase or what, but. I guess we'll find out in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's definitely some speculation on on new features. There's been some mm -hmm. things talked about, about a uh, massive update to the Windows App Store and a new ways new ways for creators to monetize their apps. Um, mm -hmm. There's talk that a lot of the Windows 10 X features or the light features that were like, kind of aimed to disrupt the Chrome OS market uh, right. are going to be now integrated back into Windows 10 proper. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the low power, uh, energy saving kind of things, uh, maybe some some better UI focus on, on mobile devices and small screen devices um, would be nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, lots of different speculation there. I've even... I don't think it's happening this year, but I've even speculated that the Windows kernel is going away in favor of the end of, of the Linux kernel of some, yeah, some that variety. could be possibly could a be. Debian based because that's right. where Windows has been aiming a lot of their products lately. So they have. And well, I just really want pinball to come back. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all I want. In, I have a new... copy. Do you want it? Do, do you realize <laughs> I, that's, I do too. Do you I want, realize I that's only the... table one of three? I know. Yes. Okay. I know. They, they I just yes, wanted I to make sure. I, I read the whole thing, and, and and that's the reason why I didn't come back. They actually lost the code. The source yep. code's gone to the ages. They have no idea where it's at. Yep. But they could do a remastered version. I want to see a remastered, you know, <laughs> uh, RTX <laughs> enabled. RTX Space Kid at Pinball. <laughs> hey, hey, you can have the ball, you know, reflect everything. That'd oh, be yeah. yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. Imagine pixel peeping on that in 8K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? If NVIDIA could get their... their uh, 
ball uh, graphic demo to, to work like that. Right. Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, yeah, that's been one of the ray tracing demos that they've done for a long, long time. Oh, yeah. I remember and, that, yeah. It, and it's always been a pipe dream. Well, recently, I guess they revamped it for RTX graphics cards. So if they oh, can nice. make that look like that, yeah, uh, I, I'd, I'd be down for a, for an RTX revisit of Space Cadet. Hey, so if somebody <laughs> from Microsoft is watching tonight, which is kind of doubtful, but There's if they couple. are... Oh, is there? Okay. Well, yeah. then there you go. There's your there's your uh, golden ticket to yep. get that suggestion up to the uppers. Remaster the pinball from Windows XP and make it RTX enabled. That's right. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Windows Windows uh, 10's killer app. Yeah, that's right. That's what <laughs> everybody's going to upgrade that pinball. <laughs> exactly. That's <laughs> <laughs> what everybody's wanting right now. That's that's what on, is on everybody's mind. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kenny says, waiting for Windows 10's chip challenge. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. What's your favorite, like, Windows 3, Windows 95 game? Oh, my gosh. Well, it's, you know, Solitaire has always been a staple. Mm -hmm. But, oh, actually, you know what? Because, actually, Windows 3.1.1 came with Tetris by default. Yes, it did. I love Tetris. Yeah. And I'm I'm really dating myself uh, now, but uh, <laughs> back, back when Windows 3.1.1 was out. No, they had the Microsoft Entertainment Pack versions yes. 1, 2, and 3 that came with various different games, uh, such as Lander uh, yes. and Tetris. And uh, there was a 3D tic-tac-toe game. There yes, was Dots. There was Code Breaker. There was, like, I got them all stored up here. Yeah. Well, I used to go. I used to go back and because, like, I'd, I'd go to well, now now my current wife, but when I was dating uh, my wife uh, way back then, uh, I would go play Tetris on her on her computer, and I was always really good at it, mm -hmm. and I always beat the high score. Always beat the high score, and then her friend would come over and get mad because I always wiped out her high high score, <laughs> and she said so she would like work for hours and hours and hours trying to beat my high score. Yeah, and she finally does it. I come back again. And it takes me like one or two tries and I beat it again. And <laughs> she gets so mad <laughs> that it didn't take me too long to beat it. Yep. All right. Uh, before we get into tonight's top story, we do have a sponsor to give it a shout out to. And that is uh, today's episode of Talking Heads is brought to you by Roguecast, an online store for the modern PC enthusiast. Uh, we've all tried to comparison shop on the usual sites filtering products by price or specs, or even what received the best review. But all too often, the specs don't match your filter, half the reviews are fake, and the components you need are out of stock anyway. Rocast is introducing a new way to buy hardware. Gone are the tacky over-the-top company promotional videos dubbed with backstep, backed with dubstep, excuse me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, instead, stuff. you'll find dedicated product reviews from reviewers you know and trust with actual information about the products you want. If you're looking for a graphics card right now, make sure to follow Real Roguecast on Twitter to get stock alerts so you can finally complete that build you've been planning since 2020. Visit Roguecast.com today and get the parts you need backed by honest reviews at a price you can afford. Again, that's Roguecast.com, and thanks again to them for sponsoring today's episode. Cheers, Roguecast. Cheers. Steve now has more beer money. That's right. I'm going to need it with all the beer I bought in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't realize I was backfilling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you are. I had, I had, we, we had brought a whole suitcase dedicated for, <laughs> for just bringing beer back. Uh, so <laughs> we knew, we knew when we, we go there, we were yeah. going to bring some. Yeah, we knew. Yeah. All right, uh, let's get into some Computex news. We'll start off with uh, Intel. Mm -hmm. uh, Intel was the first to give their press conference this year. Uh, they gave it, what was that Sunday night at 11 p.m. or something like that? Oh, man, I don't know, um, Sunday night. I, was... I mean, it, it takes place <laughs> Taipei time. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, so local time for them is not local time for like anyone else. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. Uh, anyway, so... Intel got, took to the floor first, and announced not a lot. Not much at all. <laughs> um, let's start with their Tiger Lake U refresh. You know, the mobile chips that, like, just started finally hitting the scene in, like, September. Uh, they, I know they officially launched last March, but September. Uh, 
they are now getting a refresh in the form of two new product SKUs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so previously, uh, they've had all but the 1195G7 and 1155G7. Uh, the only difference between these SKUs and the previous SKUs are about 100 megahertz on the i5 and 50 megahertz yep. to the GPU. And then on the i7 side of things, you have 100 megahertz to the base clock and 300 megahertz to the boost clock, as well as another 50 megahertz to the GPU. Uh, I myself now have an i7-1165G7. Honestly, not the worst product name in Intel has ever had. 1165G7 uh, uh, in my GPD Win 3 and oh, yeah. with Windows or with Windows with Intel XE graphics. And that thing has been dynamite so far. I have Is been really? loving every minute of that thing. Uh, but yeah, 96 compute units on the uh, or execution units, I, I should say, uh, uh, on the GPU. And thing is just dynamite. Works using fantastic. it quite a, quite a bit? Yeah, been using it yeah. a lot. A lot, a lot, yeah. both for uh, playing native games on it, because uh, mm -hmm. some games play well enough at mm -hmm. 720p, 60 FPS, and the fan mm -hmm. never kicks on, especially if it's an really? older title. Like, mm -hmm. I played Dishonored, and it draws, like, 11 watts of power, and it plays 720p, really? 60 frames per second, with, like, a 1% low of, like, 56. <laughs> nice. Um. So, yeah, that game, I, I played about halfway through already on it, and I just play that natively because... The, the system it, yeah. is so fast. Yeah, the fan never kicks on. the The experience is just butter. Um, there's other things that I that I do that I will stream from a PC because I've got you know a couple of gaming PCs down here, and so it works, works fantastic that for that as yeah. well. I mean, I've got an AC Wi-Fi point upstairs. I've got 10 gig connected computers down here. Works fantastic. Nice. Yeah, I was thinking about getting one for myself too because I'm really impressed with it. It mm -hmm. looks awesome. I, and, I have uh, been floored uh, with how good the performance is on it, both, both like I said, native and streaming. Hmm. Um, I have uh, the older GPD Win handhelds, the, the Win 1 and the Win 2. Right. And uh, the Win 1 is a fantastic streaming machine. It right. still costs $400 on eBay, though. I mean, it's, yes. it's not a cheap device. No, it's not. Um, but it's still far and away better than slapping an a 8-bit Doe controller onto a mobile phone. Right. That's, um, that's true. So it's... Six one half a dozen another. Although you also don't yeah. get R three and, and L three clicky buttons, right? And no the, the analog only, triggers. <laughs> the only thing, the only thing I know is if I get one, my my son who's only four is going to want to play on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, spending that much money on something and having a four year old play with yeah. it, and you're like, oh, don't drop it, son. That, that <laughs> is basically here, son. Here's a MacBook Pro. Yeah, it's I know. the same yeah. price. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's super cool. Uh, but he's going to want to use it. Yeah. So it's like, uh, maybe goes, I'll have to... Why did you get that? And I went, games and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> spreadsheets, man. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's my favorite Friends episode of all time. Yeah, I know. 3 yeah, 6 games. PC, 4 megabytes of RAM, built-in <laughs> spreadsheet capabilities. What are you going to use it for? Not games, games and stuff. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so great. Yeah, so... They have two new chips that are 50 megahertz better and 100 megahertz better than the chips you could already buy and can still yep. buy. Yep. Uh, and they came out with a new 5G modem, even though they yep. said they were going to be getting out of the modem business because well, they, they sold their 5G assets to Apple. They sold it to Apple, yeah. So they had to have a, a third party make it for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's not really from Intel. Right. I mean, it, they're releasing it. But I think it's who is it that's making it? it was uh, um, Fibacom? Uh, was that was that who it was Fibacom? Fibacom. That's I thought it was. Uh, oh, I thought it was MediaTek. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's MediaTek. Yeah, I'm. I'm just looking at the. Uh, yeah, modem firmware by MediaTek, module by Fibacom. So oh, there you are. You're right. Intel Both. branded it, MediaTek programmed it, and Fibacom made it. Yeah. So <laughs> here we go. So it's not really Intel. Right. At that, it's not at that an point. Intel 5G modem. And yeah. uh, they also teased a Nook 11 Extreme based on yes. 11th Gen H series processors. First Nook to dis to support full length discrete, discrete graphics. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I could fit a full 
fat desktop system inside of a case like that. So mm -hmm. who cares? <laughs> putting a I BGA guess. processor into a Nook that's eight liters doesn't really impress me. I'm sorry. No. Uh, and that was pretty much it. There were a lot of, lot of smoke and mirrors in yeah. that one. And speaking it's... of smoke and mirrors and soap, uh, we can move on to, to our NVIDIA's next sponsor. Press conference. <laughs> no, no, wait. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, our next sponsor, which would be Dove Soap. No, I don't know. We, we can move on to NVIDIA's Computex conference, mm -hmm. uh, which was just weird. I, yeah. I, I watched it. Man, that was weird. Mm -hmm. uh, that's I right. I didn't get to watch soap. it, but soap. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite line from the whole thing. That's right. Soap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, the big announcements were obviously that NVIDIA launched the 3080 Ti and the 3070 Ti. Two more graphics mm. cards that you will never see in person. Uh, that includes me. I have yet to see a single 3000 series graphics card in the yep. flesh. Neither do I. As much as I wanted one. Yep. I have not gotten to see one. I, I still want one. I, I still have money in the bank waiting for one to become available that I can buy one. My cloud gaming server is begging for three RTX 3090s uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, with water water blocks and everything else, mm -hmm. with with some of those custom cash cards that I had integrated in for, for super fast storage right. access and like, you know, 16 gamers, three GPUs. Mm -hmm. Like, that could be a real thing, yeah. but I can't get them. <laughs> no, no one can get them. I've even tried... Uh, uh, I think I can't remember where, I, where someone pointed it out, but there's there's a couple of dedicated YouTube channels that are just streaming availability. Mm -hmm. So you can sit there and oh, watch yeah, I've it seen them. and just wait. And then an uh, alert will happen, mm -hmm. like the red alert you got over yep. there. It does the same thing. It plays it on there. If something becomes available and it tells you which store. Yeah, exactly. It goes, goes rat, rat. But <laughs> they're all, they're like every time I've seen it go off, by the time I get to the store, it's gone already. Mm -hmm. so it's yep. it's it's still very um, very frustrating. I, i've received um because i've had notifications turned on for a 3090 for mm -hmm. as long as i can remember uh since it launched mm -hmm. and uh every time it's gone off that it's been in stock i've even made it there within 30 seconds of getting a push notification to my mm -hmm. phone and it's already gone yeah 30 seconds yeah done yeah no i yeah the exact yeah. same experience that i've had and uh, uh, it's just, it's almost impossible to get a hold of them. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I did, and, and I guess the kind of good news about the 30 Ti anyway, because uh, I did watch a couple reviews on it, specifically our friend Andy at eTechnics. He did uh, uh, a crypto benchmark on it, and it is a lower performance card for crypto mining, mm -hmm. which means it's not going to be as attractive to crypto mining. They mine. say. But they say. these are the same. These are the same people, yeah, who are buying full-fledged laptops mm -hmm. with 3080M graphics on board, yes. so they can set them in a in, right. a, in a tent and mine with yes, them. Yes, I know. It's I still this talking about cheaper. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it know. Still makes their money back. We we will see. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. We will mm -hmm. see because that has not stopped them 60 before. 60% so. performance. Eh. Eh. Whatever. We'll take just that buy. Hit. We'll take that hit. We'll yep. just we'll just buy five more. You know, we'll get our bots to, to harvest them for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I mean, even still, at at, at uh, what the um, the the ten eight or thirty eighty Ti at MSRP is still like twelve hundred bucks, right? Yeah, and it's not even going to go for that. No, on the, on the open no, market. add in board cards are going for like fifteen and sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. MSRP so. is not even more like guidelines anymore. It's no, just... no, it's the completely thrown out the window. It's like, yeah. <laughs> just laugh at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, MSRP. What does that mean? And um, I think I think someone even mentioned it in the uh, chat, and uh, I did make a note of it that even though online retail, you'll probably get sniped by bots. Mm -hmm. But physical stores, uh, apparently Best Buy in particular, uh, actually will have the uh, Founders Edition in stock in select stores tomorrow. Yes. Uh, it has been announced. And I think since everybody knows that, and if anybody has been paying attention to the chat, 
uh, the Salem store, which is very close to, to, to Jeff and myself, already have people lined up waiting for it to oh, open tomorrow. Oh, it's more than lined up. Uh, they also have some at Cascade Station there in yes. Tualatin. There's also some mm -hmm. in Springfield. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, they're already lined up around the corner of the building. And you know they got mm -hmm. like six cards. Yeah, you, there's going to be a limited, limited capacity. Yeah. And, and just like the first... Yeah, six people get in, they're going to get them. Yeah. And that's it. So, yeah, it's in select stores. Uh, what's funny is that happens to be three of the four closest stores to me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I uh, mean, they did they did say one card per person. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And you know they're just going to buy that turn around and sell it on the open market for two grand. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Which sucks because um, now some people have been, uh, John pointed out in the chat that, uh, you know, Salem's doing doing the best by thing. It's like, I know I could have gone and sat in line like noon today and probably mm -hmm. gotten a card, but it's $1,300. Yeah. I want the 3090 because I want yeah. the 24 gigs of VRAM. Mm -hmm. Now for games, really doesn't matter unless you're doesn't gaming really like 8K. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. No. Uh, I want it for my cloud gaming server because I want to be able to split that card six ways and have four and still have of really good each. performance yeah yeah exactly right and and have you know 18 gamers on a single chassis that'd be awesome right so that's why i want the cards that and honestly i've been pretty let down not in gaming performance by my uh 60 6900 xt mm. uh but in uh performance in video editing professional workflow Mm -hmm. it's it's not been great i i've been having a litany of of like just like little minor buggy issues right with my 5950x and 6900 xt i know woe is me um <laughs> oh, so bad. on my so five thousand so dollar pc yeah uh, <laughs> yeah no i i fully understand you know the privilege and the level of hardware that i have here but it's also aggravating when you buy a ferrari and it's in limp mode the whole time. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, you're sitting there grinding the gears and right. trying to shift and the clutch is not quite there. It clicks a little bit. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. It, yeah. It stops your, re or it peaks your red line at 3000, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like driving a Dodge truck. You know, there's torque there, but the transmission won't let you have it. Yeah. It just keeps slipping. <laughs> the I just trans pissed the, off the, all the Dodge fans in the audience. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you live near one of the 81 Best Buy locations across 81 states, hey, Oregon got three, which isn't bad. That's not bad. Yeah. So I guess I guess someone in chat saying that uh, it is illegal in Texas to camp in front of stores now. So uh, people in Texas might be able to get their hands on it if they wake up early enough. So I don't know. That just means people are going to wake up earlier you know, I could earlier. I in Texas by out. six. <laughs> Just uh, there's a Best Buy. The... There's a Best Buy just a couple miles from the Arlington Airport, if I remember right. Was it really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's one of them. You can look. Yeah. Just tack on a couple hundred bucks for a ticket. That's right. You know what's cheaper is uh, paying someone in Texas a couple hundred bucks to go buy you a card. <laughs> right there, you go. <laughs> Here's fifty bucks. Go get yourself something nice while you're there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I give and I give. Oh, uh, all right. And last we come to AMD, uh, AMD, which definitely had the best press conference. Right. Uh, they actually have some interesting stuff. They yeah. actually had some announcements. Now, I will say there's nothing groundbreaking here. No. There is a really cool announcement, which I'm pretty excited for, though. And that's uh, AMD throwing or uh, lobbing a shot firmly across the bow of NVIDIA yet again for a tech that NVIDIA did beat them to the market for, but AMD is developing the same tech and open sourcing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so first it was G-Sync and AMD said, mm -hmm. well, that's Resync. stupid. Let's just, you know, open it make up. it an open source and make it easy mm -hmm. to certify and whatnot. And, and now it's coming to the HDMI spec uh, and will just be a spec uh, that runs. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the next thing is AMD's coming after DLSS. That is uh, dynamic yeah. or deep learning super sampling. 
Yes. I always want to say dynamic. Deep, deep learning. Yeah, deep learning. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, so DLSS is the automatic upscaling machine learning backed mm -hmm. algorithm that takes your 1080p game and turns it into a 4K game while only using like 5% more graphics card resources. Yeah. Uh, but rendering at 1080p. And so that means your 1080p game, which games at, you know, 180 FPS, but you turn it onto 4K and you're lucky to get 40, uh, all of a sudden you're getting 150 FPS at 4K. And yeah. with nearly no difference. Now it's, yeah. in, in some cases, it's not quite as good as 4K, but it's also it's, really flipping it's really, close. really close. Yeah, the, the DLS S 2.0, the, the, the latest version yeah, 2 is actually is really, amazing really impressive. Support it. The first one was a little uh, is, is iffy in some places, but mm -hmm. the latest one, the, the well, I, I don't have an RTX card anymore to really do it myself, but the demos we've seen are very, very impressive. And due to all the reviews that's been out there already, yes, it's, it's very, very impressive. So um, an open source technology like that is very, very exciting. However, there is one caveat is that they really didn't show it. Uh, at Computex. They just kind of had a slide deck that they went through. They had a slide deck kind of teasing the technology and they had yeah. one image yes. of it enabled. Uh, yeah. Now, Big Brain AMD time, because they're open sourcing this, mm -hmm. the image that they showed was from a GTX 1060. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, which was kind of kind of a big slap at uh, NVIDIA. Which, which is why it's a huge shot across the bow of NVIDIA yeah. because... Uh, not even NVIDIA supports DLSS on Pascal. And right. and AMD goes, yeah, we can run it well, on we, Pascal we and there's yeah, no performance it. hit whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, though they, they, with that particular image, if you, if you do kind of zoom in and take a look at yeah. it, there is some kind of noticeable blurriness with the uh, AMD technology turned on. Because this particular picture here, it does have one picture of that column which is, uh, yeah, there you go. I'm <laughs> trying to get in. it so I can... <laughs> trying to get it. That, that, that column is, is kind of particularly telling because they're the same object. Uh, one side has it turned on, one side has it native. Yeah. Uh, and there is some noticeable blurriness yeah, there going so on. Here is um, off. Here's the, yeah. uh, the native uh, resolution. And then here's on, on the right. Oh, you, you got to move it up there, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, so <laughs> so Fidelity to... FX on, Fidelity yeah. FX off. So if we zoom into the center here. Uh, There's the center, yes. It does okay. And and again, we're pixel mm -hmm. peeping at a very, very, right. you know, minute detail here. Yeah, I thought I thought those columns in the background were a little more telling. Uh, between Because they have the intricate detail uh, that's yeah, etched in the uh, column right there. Is that some screen tear that I see? No, no, not not that one. The other no, no, columns. No. The other columns. There, there's a screen tear. Oh, there's right a screen tear the right there. Oh yeah, look at right that. Right through the middle. How did You're they miss right. that? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just that one. That one line is screen torn. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's the so only anyway, yeah. image that we got right. of showing right. it off, and it's a still frame, not a video. Yeah, so uh, we and, don't really know how well it performs. Yeah. Now, the other aspect of this is that it's using uh, per-frame analytics, right. not taking motion or blur or or any kind of frame-to-frame -frame analytics into question, yeah. uh, or into consideration, rather. Uh, which, if people remember DLSS 1.0, they did the same thing, in which they only used one frame of data at a time, did the algorithm, threw that frame out there and then just worked on the next frame with no point of reference. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that led to a lot of different anomalies and artifacts within the system uh, that made it look like hot garbage in some games, yeah. even when they were optimized. Uh, so regardless of this being open source, the proof is still gonna be in the pudding as far as is this actually a usable technology across graphics cards. Right. Now, I'm kind of excited to give this a look because it will be available for everything. That's one of the big yeah. things about this is you can run Fidelity FX on an Intel XE Anything. graphics card. Yes. Like my GPD Win 3. Right. 
right? Yeah, <laughs> and that is exciting. So uh, yeah, so I guess it's supposed to come out what June twenty second. So it's coming out this month. Uh, so mm-hmm. that we we will get our hands on it this month. We'll be able to mess with it this month. Yeah. Um. So that'll be fun. Uh, but we'll see exactly what it does. I mean, how well it works. Uh, Novella Hub, $5 donation. Thank you so much, Novella Hub. And thank you so much for the beer. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Damien Child of Darkness? Um, definitely interesting. Uh, it wasn't nearly as malty as they led me to believe. And it was... It was a thicker-bodied beer. Uh... But it reminded me more, like I said, the nose is weird. And and like I said, there's layers to this beer to peel back. Uh, so we'll start with the nose again, which confused the hell out of me because it smells like gin. Um, we've got flavors of roasted malt and dark hop. Sorry, flavors of roasted malt and dark brown sugar are suffocated by hop aromas reminiscent of tangerine and pine. I'm getting a lot of the hops. I'm not getting those darker, richer flavors, even though it's a darker, richer mouthfeel beer, Mm -hmm. which really confused the hell out of me. Um, So I don't know what to think of this one. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. Like it was good. It was, it was definitely good. Did you finish it? I did. Yeah. I I just, I just polished it off. Was that a 16 ounce? God, Mm -hmm. I'm behind. I'm like behind for once. Wow. I'm way behind for once. You were off your game today. Uh, well, I did just have a week of drinking a bunch of beer, so that's just, true. That's true. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little saturated. Yeah, my body's um, a little saturated with it. But I didn't. I'm, I'm also disappointed. I didn't get much of that deep, thick, roasted malt and and brown sugar, and mm-hmm. I, I was kind of wanting some of those richer flavors with some hops still present. And what I got was like a a dark pilsner mixed with an IPA. You were hoping more of like a hoppier dubel or something like that. Right. I was I was hoping yeah. for more of a a, a dubel uh um gosh, what's the other one that's over there? The ba, 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 ba. a brown brown. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, more of a brown ale where you get the maltiness with the hops and and whatnot. And this had it had the hops on the nose and and they definitely carry through. It wasn't enough richness to make it interesting enough. Hmm. So it was good. It was good though. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. It was definitely good. Oh man, that just that just made me remember something. I left a beer at my brother's house that I wanted to try. Dang it. <laughs> I'm mad now. He better save it. <laughs> it was it was a it was a it was a pastry stout, so it should last a while. It, it should, should last a while. Yeah. It should. You better not drink it. Right. Um, <laughs> my brother-in-law actually, uh, so uh, he came over, we went out uh, to the tap house, came back to my house and uh, and had another couple of beers, opened a couple of good ones. Um, and uh, he bought a couple of beers that uh, just like I did when we were down there. Right. Uh, well, he left him at my house and then I saw him on Sunday and he goes, hey, can you, or I saw him on Monday and he goes, hey, can you bring him on Monday? So I brought him mm-hmm. with me on Monday and he left him with my stuff. So he, so they came back home with me, and, right. and now I'm going. Uh, uh, I could probably have it. Yeah, uh, I'll just I'll just pay him back. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'll repay him with a with a case of bud. It's yeah, equivalent, yeah, right? I, I don't remember what I got, and that's really unfortunate. I'll I'll have to post it in the after party. Yeah, because they're good beers. They're very yeah. very good beers. No, I, I got I got quite a few beers, um, some that I didn't get to try that I wanted to try because mm-hmm. a lot of places I went to uh, had a lot of bottle only selections where you had to buy the bottle and open it there. But I'm like, I'm not I'm not going to do that. There's already so much that you have on tap that I'm going to try. So I'll just buy it and take it home. If I like what you have on tap, good chance that what's in the can is going to taste good, too. So, yeah, like I said, a whole suitcase dedicated for just beer. And we, we brought extra uh, uh, packing material, too. Just yes. so, you know, yes. Yeah. So, no, we, we came prepared definitely for that one. Yep. Actually, I had I had uh, a barley wine over there. It was at Cooper Smith's. It's in, uh, it's in like, downtown uh, Fort Collins. Mm-hmm. Probably uh, in my top five barley wines of all time. It was not bad. excellent. 
it was very very good the rest of their beers yeah but man they just made an excellent excellent barley wine it was superb it was it was delicious by the way, people better be paying attention to chat because I'm I'm going nuts here. Uh, the first 3090 to show up in my PO box, I'm giving away four barley, four barrel aged barley wines, all different, and a trip in the woods from 2016. Oh yeah. So if people can start making that hookup happen, I will <laughs> gladly hook you up with beer. There you go, bribing people with alcohol. What That's if it's right. like a 13 year old kid? Yeah. Well, I'll give it to his dad. <laughs> all right. What if his dad left for some smokes and never came back? <laughs> then I'll find his dad. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you're like, you get, you get me, the, you get me the card, and I'll get you some smokes. <laughs> I will check every Seven Eleven in this country. <laughs> uh, yep, yep, yep. All right, we got a couple more AMD notes here. Uh, first off. Uh, one thing that I've been wanting to happen for quite a while mm -hmm. finally did, and that is that AMD is no longer sanctioning off their higher core count APUs right. uh, for only professional and OEM customers. Um, so there have been CPUs like the 4650G and the 4750G mm -hmm. that have 7 nanometer Vega 8 graphics with Zen 2 or Zen Plus architecture on board. Yep. Uh, for pretty reasonable prices, but yeah. you have to get them off AliExpress. And by the time you get them, they're more expensive than their shelved counterparts uh, of the non-APU parts. So right. uh, 4750G costs way more than a 3700X does. And it makes no sense to do that. Exactly. Unless you, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, so there's been a lot of, a lot of people asking for, hey, you know, I'd like to make a kick butt home theater PC with integrated graphics because, mm -hmm. well, I don't need, you know, a, a 1660 in my home theater PC, mm -hmm. but a Vega 8 would do just fine, but I'm also not going to spend $400 on a 4750G. Mm -hmm. uh, well, AMD is finally listening to consumers and is doing just that. Yeah. Uh, so coming, what was this, August 5th or something like that? Yeah, this um, year, definitely. Yeah, August 5th. Uh, it's in the title. I should have figured that out. Uh, August 5th, uh, AMD 5000G APUs based on Zen 3 architecture yeah. uh, are coming to the market. Uh, that is the 5700G and the 5600G. Uh, these are going to be priced actually below their X series counterparts by about $40 each. Uh, so 369 and 269, I believe, were the... I believe, oh, 359 and 259. So $40 less than the yeah than their equivalent uh, X series parts. Um, they're only about one to 200 megahertz shy of the base and boost clocks and they have integrated graphics and they're $40 less. So definitely not bad CPUs to pick no. up. Um, well, well, the, the uh, what was it? The 5700G is 40 different, but I think the, oh no, was it the 4700? I think the forty-seven, or the fifty-seven hundred G was uh, about ninety dollars difference. I think. Was it that there was, much? There was. I think. I think the higher end one there was. Oh, a that's right. No, the fifty-eight hundred X is uh, yeah. is is four hundred fifty. No, you're right. You're yeah, absolutely. It was right. a higher, higher, higher spread. Yeah. No, I I I thought it was three ninety nine for some reason, but no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, that turns that into a pretty stellar deal yeah it becomes more interesting at that point at the at the lower end uh the, the 5600g yeah it's, it's like you said 40 dollar difference yeah i mean that's what's that that's a that's a couple of barley wines uh <laughs> but yeah at the uh the 5700g that's it gets more interesting it, it seems like uh you save about 100 bucks yeah and you have and you have integrated graphics in there so you don't have to go out and, and uh, buy a uh, right. external a different graphics and, card, so. and from what i've been seeing in some early early benchmarks is uh they're not that bad uh, yeah. as, as far as graphics goes i mean they're they're not a, a 1660 or a 2070 or something like that mm -hmm. they're not a replacement for 5500 you know no actually. no but uh the but yeah like 1080p you said medium settings yeah, you you could you could make that a media center thing easily for encoding. You can do that. You can do it like a little bit of gaming and stuff like that. It'd be perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. 
Definitely, definitely. And last but not least, uh, this one is more half rumor, half confirmed, half render, half best yeah. speculative guess, I guess you could say. Um, and that is, uh, we're pretty certain at this point that AMD is going to leave behind the uh, uh, the PGA, so the pin on CPU, uh, pin grid array uh, platform and go over to an LGA style platform. That is the pins on the motherboard and just pads on the CPU. Uh, makes a lot of sense, especially given the size yep. that they are talking, the new They're CPU tiny now. being. No, no more, no more pins being ripped out when you take the fan out. Or <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Finally, actually, a mechanism to hold the CPU down while you're taking the heat sink off. Yep, exactly. If only we'd have thought no. about this back in the socket A days. <laughs> Sorry, this has been a long time problem for AMD. Oh yeah, I. <laughs> what you're not gonna miss like getting a magnifying glass and trying to bend pins back. <laughs> no. <laughs> getting a mechanical pencil and a yeah. <laughs> set of tweezers yeah yep no i will not miss those days at all uh so based on the size of the chip this is definitely a good thing mm -hmm. uh this will be a square shaped chip uh with a 1718 lga socket uh and it is kind of a beast to behold look at the look at this thing yeah it looks great uh so this is an artist's render uh of what they're assuming this could look like now right. again to be clear we know pretty much what pin count the socket will be and we know that it will be square but this is the best guess so and the but, ihs looks really interesting though right yeah i'm, I'm kind of curious about that myself uh whether they're going to ditch the the square ihs uh model with no rim and go to the mm -hmm. more intel style where it's a tapered design mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. So, like I said, yeah. completely not official, completely right. speculative. But, these are just renders. Yeah, these are just renders. Right. But they're renders with a good idea of what is going to happen and something that should look very, very similar when they come to market. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, for one, can't wait to get rid of, uh, of PGA sockets. Yeah, you and me both. Yep. Okay. okay. Wow, well, uh, we're right at right at nine o'clock, aren't we? We are. Uh, you ready to open your next? I am, and Sweet. I think um, since I have my Avery glass and uh, I've been talking them up, I'm going to try the, uh, the pair of peaches pear, pear, or pair of peaches. Pair of peaches. Excuse yeah. Me. So it's it's a peaches and, and uh, imperial hazy India pale ale with pears and peaches. Nice. Of course. Yeah. Let's give this one a shot. And I will be doing the Jay Wakefield Brewing uh, Drop and Dimes. This is an 8% double dry hopped IPA. This glass barely holds that. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, this gosh. is exactly a 16 ounce glass. So it's always fun trying to get oh. every drop in. This is. This is an absolutely uh, dangerous, dangerous beer. Oh, yeah? It's 9%, but it drinks like fruit juice. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, just from like this distance, this smells like fruit juice. <laughs> this tastes like peaches and pears. It is absolutely delicious. But it's and it, and it, not boozy. And it's 9%. Oh my God, that's delicious. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, that looks the, great. Not the clearest Look, beer in the world. Uh, Carmely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mine's pretty hazy. It's, it's supposed to be hazy, so. Yeah, this this one is not a hazy. This is just a double dry hop. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's all of that, that fruit sweetness that I like in hazy IPAs. Mm -hmm. There's no acid burn to this at all. Oh, that's good. It's just... How do I describe that smell? That is syrup, or not syrup, strawberry, uh, mm. maybe a little guava, some orange and mango on there. Like there's a there's mm. a whole fruit salad in this glass. Nice. 
So good. We both got delicious, delicious hazies. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, man. And yeah, no burn at all. It, 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 it's got a little bit of oil, but it's still very mm. drying. Uh, but no burn. Wow. Well, I think they're starting. They're, 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 I think they're starting to perfect how to do the hazies, so don't it mm -hmm. doesn't get the haze burn. Right. I still come across them once in a while, uh, but not so much anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little more sensitive to it than uh, than I think you and John are. Where yeah. where I, I will tap out of a hazy a little sooner than you. Or, guys. or it could be we just both killed our taste buds already because it we drank so be many too. of them. Yeah, <laughs> you could just like they're all burnt <laughs> off now. Yeah. We need like taste bud graphs. <laughs> if anybody has uh, don't want their taste buds anymore and uh, doesn't mind donating, uh, Steve will send you buds. a thirty ninety in exchange for a fresh yeah. tongue. <laughs> Something. <laughs> I've already killed it with like hazy IPAs and hot sauce. <laughs> it's like I can't uh, taste anything anymore. The question I have is who gets your tongue? Uh, <laughs> I could get some hobo, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and on that happy note, uh, we do have one more sponsor uh, of today's episode. And, Ivory uh, Soap. And that is oh, no. uh, today's episode is brought to you by Linode. If you've ever needed to host your own servers, whether it be for home or business, but don't have the resources or time to invest in hardware, power, cooling, and even space, why not let Linode host them for you? If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. That includes the software from most of the tutorials on this channel, like how to run your own ad-blocking recursive DNS server, VPN gateway, or your own cloud-based Plex server, and more. Linode makes it simple to manage and deploy your own cloud services, with solutions ranging from a single shared CPU to massive multi-core virtual machines. They even offer dedicated GPUs in the RTX 6000 series for graphics rendering or machine learning. With shared CPU plans starting at as little as $5 per month and scaling up to as high as you need to go, you'll be able to find the hosting plan that fits your needs. Even if you do host your own servers, you can always use Linode to keep a backup off-site. Because remember, RAID is not a backup. Visit linode.com slash craft computing and get a $100 60-day credit just for signing up for a new account. That's linode.com slash craft computing and thanks to Linode for sponsoring today's episode. Another cheers to Linode. That's right. Mm. We do need to get some beer sponsors though. I really do. Yeah. I, we, need, we had Rogue send us something a long time ago. Um, I've had <laughs> Rogue send me out some stuff. I've had a couple others uh, here and there. Um, the problem with a lot of, um, uh, I don't, I don't want to say a problem. I, I want to say one of the difficulties of working with, uh, with beer companies mm -hmm. is the PR departments are often not focused my direction and yeah. PR in general typically has a pretty high turnover, um, right. regardless of industry. And yeah. So I'll have one person on a PR firm who is super psyched to work with me. Mm -hmm. And then the next replacement comes in and goes, I'm not dealing with this YouTuber. Uh, crap. Yeah. I don't know who this and is. And then the that. next guy is like, yeah, I see we worked with you before. I guess I can send you out a six pack or something. And then the next guy right. comes in and goes, who are you again? So yeah. yeah, it's like in the time that I've been working with a couple of, um, this happens in the tech industry as well. This happened yeah. with, uh, with one company I'm not going to name here, but uh, a long time uh, rep for that company left, and now they won't even respond to my emails. Like, I don't know if I'm blacklisted or what, but but I I uh, I, I had a 30 minute conversation with him and the guys who were taking over his job, and and shook their hands and exchanged business cards and yeah, let's let's do this thing. Like last year at CES. Oh yeah, I, and I can't that, yeah. get an email back now. Yeah. Just because of that transition, and yeah. it happens. Uh, yeah. You know, un unless until you have, you know, that five hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand subscriber count, and and are on everyone's distribution list. Yeah, and let's be real. And it, and alcohol it's, and it's no even one has harder. Problems and, selling alcohol. Right. People want right. to buy alcohol. Right. It's not like. <laughs> like it, and it's and it's even harder when you're doing industry parallel things because right. I don't work with beer companies every week. I, I right. don't. I don't you know, collaborate with them. It, it's very much a, a one-time, you know, deal oftentimes. And then mm -hmm. there's just as much turnover over there. And so I really don't blame them for not knowing who I am. Right. And, you know, you know, flavors and beer, that's subjective. Some people like certain things and other people's don't. And you could be sitting there sipping and say, oh, this is sponsored by blah, blah, blah. Thanks for sending me beer. 
you're not going to do a review on it because you might hate it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Looks like we got another super chat. Yep, one sec. Yeah, I hear you typing away. And your is that is that your custom keyboard? Yes. No, this isn't my custom one. This is oh, the, that's not your custom one. This is the first one that I swapped out switches for that led me to buy a custom keyboard. I <laughs> uh, gotcha. Yeah, so this this is still Gatteron Greens and okay. I'm still loving it. Yeah, no, the other one sits on my on my main workstation. Uh, anyway, uh, Mogdog66, another $5. Thank you so much. Another thing, I was comparing the UDM Pro to the USG Pro and cannot find any reason to get the UDM. Did you compare the two when you were building your network? Um, uh, I'll be completely transparent. Uh, Unify sent me the UDM Pro, although I am very aware of both the... Uh, I, I've previously owned a USG and I've deployed dozens of them. Um, I've also deployed a couple of USG Pros. Um, and was kind of looking at the USG Pro. Uh, the advantage to the UDM Pro is it's a full integration of all of Unify's services. So if you want to do access control and cameras and Wi-Fi and firewall and manage your switches and host your own controller without you know having to host your own additional hardware, uh, that's what the UDM Pro is for. The USG Pro is strictly their firewall. It's strictly their router um, with more capabilities and more speed than their standard USG, um, which for the average home user, the USG is fine. Uh, for, for gigabit two-way traffic, it'll do it. Um, when you start getting more and more clients, when you're, when you're into the hundreds of clients is when you need to start looking at the, the USG Pro uh, or you have more than gigabit uh, uh, full duplex. Um, so if you want to do a full investment into everything Unify, the UDM Pro is definitely the way to go because you don't have to source your own hardware for your NVR for camera systems, your access control can work, your smart home can work, your Wi-Fi and switches and whatnot all have a controller that's on one device. If you just need a, a pretty good firewall, USG Pro is a great option. Uh, and we got another $10 donation, uh, Denvera. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Sorry I'm late. Did you already compare and contrast the 102 class die 1199 1080 Ti or 10, uh, sorry, 3080 Ti and the 100 class uh, die class 999 from the Titan X from 2015, both with 12 gigs of RAM? Um, you can't compare what they're calling their series of dies across generations like that, uh, especially across three generations. Because remember, Pascal is three generations old. Pascal... Yeah. Turing Ampere. Um, so, no, we, we didn't compare the 100 class $1,000 Titan X from 2015 because they're different manufacturing processes. They're different manufacturers of, of that fabrication. Uh, different memory controllers. There, there's different, all different specs. This is a 100% ground up different architecture than Titan X. And you could, yeah. you could say Titan X or Titan X little P. Uh, because you can also say Titan X for uh, for Kepler uh, and and Maxwell, you know those and were the original saying, Titans. If so. you keep saying Titan X over and over and over again really fast, it starts to sound really weird. Right, Titan X, Titan X, Titan X, Titan X, Titan X. Yeah, yeah. So no, and also, and what we talked about was just basically how we cannot get a hold of a thirty eighty Ti anyway. Right. So, but but I've talked about at length on this channel or on the show before about how NVIDIA is pushing the market higher and higher because consumers have proven to be willing to spend more and more money. There's a reason that in 2015, the Titan X was selling for $1,000, which was right after the GTX 690 was selling for $1,000. And they were the absolute enthusiast of the enthusiast card. Um, like I was seen as absolutely BS crazy. Um, when I bought a pair of 9800 GTX Plus cards in 2008 to run an SLI, um, because those were $479 cards each. So I spent $1,000 on my graphics solution in 2008. Um, and that was unheard of. Like, 
everyone, even the high-end enthusiasts, were spending like 350 at most. In fact, most graphics cards yeah. were in the 100 or were in the 200 to 250 range. Mm -hmm. Now, the mid-range cards are $500 and up. Yeah. And it's because Nvidia realized that more and more people are buying more and more graphics cards and they're willing to spend a higher amount so they can spend more on the silicon that goes into it and people will still buy it. Because I'm sorry, but there was no market for the Titan Volta, the Titan V when it came out. Uh what was that? 2017, something like that. Mm -hmm. But there is today. That market yeah. exists. It's because the availability is so pathetic right now. It's just hard. Not just yeah. availability. People are willing to spend twenty five hundred dollars yes. oh, yeah. on a graphics card today. Oh yes, of course. Now it's it's not like you it's and because... me, but people. No. <laughs> no. I mean, after a while, the the bubble in the market's got to burst. It's going to happen. It's it's unsustainable at this rate. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm and and I understand that there's supply problems and stuff like that, but. It's gonna take a it's it's gonna take a crash here pretty soon. It's it's gonna have to. It's because people are not gonna. There's gonna be a there's gonna. I mean, there's gonna be a ceiling. There's gonna eventually be a ceiling. The the problem is right now that so much of crypto is based on, uh, or or can be easily calculated with, uh, with compute out of multi parallelized right. graphics yes, cards. That's true. And it, so even yeah. even when Ethereum goes to ASIC mining later this mm -hmm. year. They're going to move on to mining the next one, whether it's mm -hmm. Doge, whether it's whatever else, because like Do Doge is too too easy to mine. It's not going to go. In. But but yeah, you're right. But it's on to the next be, thing. It's going to be on to the next thing. Right. Yeah. We thought the same thing when Bitcoin crashed and, right. and Ethereum crashed and, and whatnot back in 2018. And we yeah, thought we the had graphics a, card market was bad then. Oh, yeah. That was we had a nice respite. We're like, oh, it's everything's going back to normal. Right. right. Can <sighs> you believe I paid three hundred dollars for an RX 580? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was. Oh my god, <laughs> I was insane in that video. I actually yeah. bought an RX 580 from a guy off Craigslist uh, to do that video, uh, and uh, and reviewed it. And the video did quite well. Can you buy a graphics card from a miner and does it hold up and whatnot? So I reviewed it against a an RX 580 from the same generation, different manufacturer, but. Tested it and went, yeah, it performs exactly like an RX 580 would. There's no coil wine, fans running good. Everything like it was a good video, but I was insane for spending three hundred dollars on a two hundred seventy nine dollar graphics card. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. I Look mean, at that's, me now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> exactly. You got an RX 580? I'll buy it for three hundred. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous what they're going for now. Well, no, I won't because that that's an RX 580 right there. But. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's just kind of kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, Denver was talking Titan X Maxwell. Um, yeah, but the 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 point still applies that you can't really compare the architectures. Uh, I I just find it odd that the RTX six thousand is not even twenty percent more expensive than the Quadro six thousand from twenty ten, but the RTX thirty ninety. Um, the thing is, the Quadros have always been well overpriced and uh, uh, aimed at the business market, which yeah. will spend that amount of money. Um, you're not buying a a, a high-end Cisco 3600X router to run in your house with licenses for 1,000 VPN clients. Right. That's what Cisco sells. And that's what the Quadro is. The Quadro is professional graphics cards with ECC memory that have been validated and have and have drivers written specifically for them to be proven stable uh, for situations that have to be 100% stable 100% of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not a game where you can overclock to the knife's edge and if you drop a frame or if you crash, or, no, no one deal. cares. You reload yeah. your game. The Quadros were the certified premium bulletproof never die cards. And yep. uh with with some special features, with with virtualization technology unlocked and, and with some other things like that. So yeah, you kind of kind of apples to oranges. You, yeah, point, yeah, you can't say that, well, this series of graphics cards cost four thousand dollars before, and all of a sudden the consumer level is creeping up. Right. But <laughs> They're putting a lot more cards. silicon into uh, into graphics cards today.
<laughs> Javin says, speak for yourself. You don't know what I run on my home network. If you need a thousand <laughs> VPN clients, you. <laughs> I don't want anybody to know anywhere where I'm at. I'm yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, yep. 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 $1,200 is not reasonable. 12 months of savings. Yeah. And for a lot of people, it's not reasonable. For me, it's not reasonable. Um, people people are using it instead of engagement rings. They're like, hey, look at I got this 2080 <laughs> card. Will you marry me? <laughs> I have spent so oh, much yes, more. Yes. <laughs> I have spent so much more on processors than I ever did on my wife's engagement <laughs> ring. <laughs> I'm sure she's happy about that too. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, well, she knows. She, yeah, she knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but she plays on them too, right? I mean, she's probably got more use out of those graphics cards than that ring. Come on, let's be true. Let's be realistic. That's true. Okay. Uh, we do have a couple beer notes to get to. Yeah, just a few. Yeah. Uh. This one is just yeah, I don't sign know about of this the one. times. Yeah, it really is. It's just riding that trend. I'm I'm just waiting for Natty Ice to come out with the same concept mm -hmm. next week. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it'll it'll come out and just like hey, Natty let's Ice do this. NFT crypto. Basically, because um, you know craft beer is all about that blockchain. <laughs> So basically, we have the world's first uh, crypto beer. Yes. So we have, and, and when I say crypto beer, we're we're talking uh, the uh, NFTs. Like, uh, there's apparently non -frangible some non-frangible tokens. Yes. <laughs> is it frangible? Or is it fungible? I thought it was fungible. Non-fungible. Excuse me. Fungible. Frangible. Yeah. Fungible. Yeah. Fungible. Non-fungible tokens. Excuse yeah. me. Which is just a fancy word of saying it's collectible. It's unique. It's a unique, it's unique. identifier. It's a, it's it's collectible and it's on the blockchain, so it's it's like there's mm -hmm. a definite stamp to say that this is a collectible. Right. Um, although you know, looking at this artwork that we have right here, this is uh, there's a there's a video that goes along with it. This is this is a still from the video, but the video is the artwork that actually goes with. That's that is the NFT. That piece of artwork is the NFT that goes with the beer that you will own if you buy the beer with it. The, they're not even selling you the video, they're selling you the the still frame? No, there is a there's a video that was it that goes with it. Um but uh <laughs> you will you will have the NFT uh uh I guess code or whatever that okay. goes with it. Okay. So so it's if limited to 250 cans and each yes. can is getting an NFT mm -hmm. with and the, the NFT, NFT is on the blockchain. Represented from the artwork. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And if you look at it, they have a sample of it, and it's not it's not impressive. Do you remember the um, Do you remember the the Regal Cinemas? Uh, uh, oh yeah, the the, the, the 3D coaster? popcorn intro. The, yeah, the, yeah, the popcorn that looked like it was made of stucco. That, that yeah. horrible thing from the like, yeah. You, That's you, what get, that you got. You got the Coca Cola log flume and yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that. That reminds me of of that. That's what the art reminded me of. It's like this is the. I, I was intro always to more of a Cinemark with the flying through space one. Yeah, that was better. That that, that, <laughs> that was my jam. Okay, but that's that's what this is, this artwork reminded me of. But you know, apparently, you're not it's, wrong. Especially yeah. as I scroll down and uh, there's on. there's a video down there, and oh, you can look God. at it. Right? Am I not? I right? hadn't watched right. the video. All I'd seen. Was I'm the absolutely still. right. No, that is straight out of Regal Cinemas. Thanks for watching the 20. Yeah. Please silence, Please your, silence cell phones. your cell phones. Be courteous <laughs> of others. Popcorn is available in the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that that's horrible graphics. Yeah. NFT but, uh, Valley, a nice place to live. That's mm -hmm. that's how I want to advertise everything from now on. <laughs> NFT Valley. Wow, the car with horrible reflection and no shaders. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boy, that was awful. Yeah. Yeah. That was so yeah, it was. Awful. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yet, I guess the highest bid right now is at two hundred dollars. Mm. Well, for a can. Yep. Ugh. Better be Sam Adams Utopia. Something like that. Yeah, it says in order to bid on the NFT, you have to have a crypto wallet, which means you essentially have to have cryptocurrency. Right. Uh, and then you can bid on it. And then, um, yeah. I think that's how it goes. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not something that I'm going to do. <laughs> yep. Uh, in other news, uh, a Belgian Abbey is brewing again for the first After... time yeah. in two centuries that's right yeah uh so this belgian abbey last produced beer in the 1300s mm -hmm. sorry 1100s 1100s. Yeah, 1100s yeah 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 the french burnt burnt them down uh they burnt down the abbey that's a, another reason not to like the french i guess yeah and not the french canadians we like oh, sorry they first Those produced beer in the in the 1100s they burnt it down in the early 1800s and yeah. and now they are resurrecting the brewery and it's rising from the ashes uh, as the title says yes and they're going to start brewing there again yeah and they're they're going to be doing more of like what you expect from uh, a belgian brewery more of the trappist style beers mm -hmm. so um I, i'm not going to complain about that because i love that style i um, love a good a good belgian right. beer Oh man, that's like what? It's the antithesis of the giant hoppy IPA. It's yes. a big giant sweet malt bomb. Yes, absolutely delicious. And I love the uh, I love having that. Man, yeah, I do bells and trip bells. Drip, mm, yeah, so tri good. trip bells and yeah. Yep. I mean, we're we're kind of fortunate. Um, and I, I don't know if I ever. I think we might have discussed. We, we've talked about the, the, the Mount Angel yeah. Abbey. Yeah. So not yeah. too far from us is is a is an abbey. Uh, they're not Trappist monks, but they're Benedictine monks, but they're monks nonetheless. And they have a brewery out there where they brew, you know, trip bells and, and do bells and, and they're saisons. Fantastic. And they're so good. Yeah. Um, it, it's not like I, I've seen breweries where they try to build something off a shtick mm -hmm. off of a, uh, like, like th this, this whole area is all about, you know the 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 traditional Hefeweizen, and we're a traditional mm -hmm. German town, or we're this or yeah. we're that. Um, look up pictures for Mount Angel, Oregon. Mm -hmm. It is one hundred percent a German town through and through, including Very their Bavarian. town hall, their city yep. hall, their downtown. They have the best Oktoberfest in the valley, mm -hmm. uh, and they have uh, Saint Benedictine Saint Benedictine Brewing, which it, which is brewed in the Abbey. And they have some of the most fantastic German beer, even from the German beer I've had imported, yeah. that I've ever had in my life. It's very good. And they don't just do that. They, they do some like Cascadian Dark. Mm -hmm. They do some Saisons and stuff like that, too. Yeah. But every time I go there, I I, I just get their Trip L. The, yeah, so, their, their Trip L is amazing. Oh, so good. That's super good. But, you know, there's always market for more. And uh, this is this is now what this was in... Um, this abbey was where was it? I forget. It was in it was in Belgium. Yeah, it's in Belgium. Yeah. So it's another Belgian brewery. So yeah, we can always use more, uh, especially after um, two hundred years coming back. And apparently, they uh, are looking into the library of the abbey that's there. Yes. There are some recipes that they had found, and they're uh, uh, reusing those recipes, obviously with more modern methods, but. They're trying to duplicate some of the exact same recipes um, that were there. And it's kind of interesting because some of them actually called for a smoked malt. So it's a lot of these things are going to be more like a Schwartz beer with a, with a smoky flavor to it. Right. Could be good. Well, we'll see. We'll have to go keep an eye on it. Hopefully they uh, send some out here to us. I'm definitely interested. You know? I'll give you some get... press. Send me a couple of bottles. Yeah. We'll, we'll, do, we'll sponsor you guys. Heck yeah. Uh, moving into some gaming news now. Uh, this story, I believe we talked about two years ago when it happened. Yeah. Um, and that is that the site, what was the site name? I'm drawing a blank. 
Oh, uh, it was ROM uh, ROMUniverse dot com. Yeah. Um. So the creators of the site ROM Universe ran into some uh, pretty hefty legal problems when the Nintendo legal team came down on them. Yep. Uh, justifiably so. Uh, yep. Now, regardless of your stance on emulators and ROMs, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I've been a little bit more bold in, in my my videos lately with including some emulation. Um, but all of the games that I review, I own physical copies of. Yeah. And so I, I, I try to make that very, I, I try to make that a very distinct line that I walk on where mm -hmm. I'm emulating it, but I have the cartridge like literally sitting next right. to me. Right, there are some gray areas and, and some very legal things that go right. along with it, yes. I will say there's some gray areas, but I am not a lawyer. Do not take this as legal advice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think if software has been on the market 30 years, it deserves to be just software. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's also the case of like abandonware where the company right. no longer exists. No one holds the rights to right. it. We want to preserve it. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But what happens when EA buys the rights to everything micro pros or, you know, yeah. you go down the list of all these, the old Sierra point and click games and mm -hmm. whatnot. It's like, who gets those? And mm -hmm. the, the answer is no one, but the answer is also it's still technically illegal, but no one can come after you for yeah, it unless, right. you know, yeah. Well, the main reason people would come after you for it is if you started charging money for it. Mm -hmm. Started charging money for intellectual property that does not belong to you. Correct. You will 100% get lawyers on your ass at that point. And that's what happened here. Right. Um, so it's not really the fact that he was distributing ROMs because that happens all the time. Yeah. There, there's a dozen sites that I can point you to right now, allegedly, uh, that you can download ROMs from, Nintendo or otherwise. The problem was he was charging for faster access and faster download speeds and more concurrent downloads. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he was putting a paywall between you and getting more games. And that is a direct monetary interest in the yeah. downloads that happen. Yeah. Uh because there's, uh, gosh, what do they call it? It was the, uh, uh, there's a certain term for uh, safe harbor. There it is. Safe harbor, yeah. I couldn't yeah. remember what it was. I, I knew it was right. in the, the next article. Yeah, um, yeah there, there's a safe harbor rule that says as a net host, uh, you are exempt from requiring to validate the content on your network unless you yourself are charging for access to that network. Right. And where this guy misstepped was he was charging for better access to his network yep. in which he knowingly uploaded illegal content. Right. Um, so now the owner of, uh, of ROM Universe owes Nintendo $2.1 million. Right. <laughs> and supposedly he only made like thirty six thousand a year from the site. Yeah. So huge misstep. Yep. Huge misstep. Um. Yeah. You you don't want to start charging uh people for other people's intellectual property. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a bad time. Which, by the way, he chose to represent himself in court, yes, which is that, the I, most I, asinine I decision that was, you could possibly that was, that make faced big, against Nintendo's legal you know, team. Yeah, I know. Just get a lawyer and plead out, and maybe you pay, you know, a couple grand or something like right, that. Right, right. You maybe have that saved up for how many years P you had plead it. Plead out, plead yeah. out, settle for 20000 right. never show right. your face on the internet again. Like, you got thing. away with it. There's been, there's been, uh, you know, studies, and there's a, a couple things about piracy and stuff like that, where there is uh, the case that if, if people have the money, they will, and it's, and it's well, and it's cheap enough, and it's, you know, easy access, like how Steam is, piracy goes down mm -hmm. because people feel like this is this is a good deal. This is worth my money. But if it's too high or too hard to get, then that's when piracy starts going up because they can't afford it. Right. Well, so I, I, I've always said, and I fully agree with uh, with uh, Gabe Newell on this, is that mm -hmm. piracy is not a monetary issue. It's a supply issue. Yeah, and, exactly. and we've That's seen this, yeah. and we've seen the same supply issue start to rear its head over the last two years with um, all of the companies and and studios and and production houses and and mm -hmm. and whatnot breaking away from like, well, why should we let Netflix and Hulu run everything when we could just run our own service and charge people the same amount of money? 
only right. only not to realize that they have 10% of the catalog that Netflix does. Yeah. And not everyone's willing to pay $13 a month right. for just CBS content or yeah, just that, yeah. ABC content or right. just Disney Plus. And people well, are maybe still Disney just Plus subscribed. because Disney has 50% of the content now because yeah, they bought yeah. everyone else out. But Yeah. But yeah, no, that's that's precisely right. And so uh so the fact that he starts charging money for this mm -hmm. automatically means that they're going to come after him. It just that's just basically right. what it is. Right. One one of the one of the hallmarks of copyright infringement law. And again, I am not a lawyer. Yeah. Do not come after me. I this is not legal advice. One of the hallmarks of copyright infringement law is when it comes to profit, when it comes to dollar amount. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the FBI warnings that show up on the front of mm -hmm. every Blu-ray and DVD and VHS and Betamax, sorry, Steve, to call you out, uh, that you've <laughs> ever owned. Uh, I had Laserdisc, man. You had Laserdisc? Well, <laughs> yeah, you were a smarter man than I. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, they, they've always included the statute that, uh, you cannot make illegal copies. However, the full illegal copy statute said for profit. For profit. Yes. You, you can make personal you, copies. That was yeah. always fully you could, allowed. But you, you couldn't, you couldn't take and make a copy and then try to sell it to somebody. Yeah. You couldn't reproduce the copy for monetary gain. Right. And that's where this went wrong is the DMCA allows for safe harbor for content carriers, providers, web hosts, etc., to say, I didn't know they were hosting, you know, ROM files from Nintendo on my site. I'm just, right. I'm just I'm a middleman with server space. space. Man, I just, I just have a space. Right. I, I just sell storage units. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if they were, if they were storing drugs in there, how am I supposed to know that? How am right? I supposed to know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, regardless of the signs that, you know, we let the local PD, you know, test, test here for <laughs> test oh, yeah. drug dogs here. Um, how was I supposed to know? Right. Yeah. Know. Paying customer always, always paid in cash the first of every month. Like it's fine to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's when money becomes involved that yeah. you become, that you put the target squarely on your own back yep. and you, you will incur the wrath of everything that you've, yeah. that you've sowed. Uh, I am not a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. that's I may fine. have a massive ROM collection, but but I'm not distributing it. Not distributing. None I'm of not it is current generation. It. None of I'm it not, is current I'm generation. Definitely not selling it. Definitely not selling it. Also, didn't pay money for it. So I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you get access to my server for free. Uh, but my uh, OnlyFans account, you have to subscribe to first. <laughs> That's a loophole right there. Subscribe to Steve's OnlyFans to get access to his <laughs> ROM collection. <laughs> That's a loophole. Uh, watch me play God of War 2. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, to, for the trifecta, go ahead and do that on Twitch in your hot tub. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and sell the hey, water when you're wait, done. Hey, hey, sell I, the bath I, water when you're done. I, I did. I did the after party from my hot tub uh, a couple true. weeks ago. That's true. That was free, man. I mean, it didn't last that long. You I, see what so kind it. of access you guys get on, on the Discord? <laughs> Subscribe to the Patreon or the Float Plane. Get exclusive access to the Discord and see Steve in a hot tub. Yeah, it was great. Yep, topless Steve with ROMs. <laughs> Snowball yeah. obsess. What's not to like about that? Uh, Denver S says not to. Uh, I know I'm being pendant. I'm I'm assuming you mean pedantic. Uh, but I record all of my stuff OTA over the air, and if that goes away, I still won't stream because there because there will be public domain. I'm not quite sure what point you were trying to make there. Um, I record all my stuff over the air. I'm assuming you mean like. If you're talking broadcast television, that's been a well-established. Yeah, that's been uh, fine forever. That, that's that's called time shifting. That is the service is readily available, and I have a method in which to capture it, and I'm going to view that content at a later time in the original format that it was presented. Right. That's called time shift, and, and that was fun. copyright law that was established, I believe, in like '82. Oh yeah, when VCRs hit the market. Yeah, there was a big, big, interesting uh, yeah. history behind. And that. again, it was the MPAA and RIAA who were at yeah. the helm of that one, going, "They shouldn't be able to to like 
listen when they want. Yeah, I know <laughs> we can't. We can't the nerve of these people. Yeah, I think what what it ended up being was like there was a. I think there's a slice of all VHS blank VHS tapes that actually ended up going to some of these studios mm-hmm. uh, because of that or something. There was a, a, an agreement that came to that. Yeah, there was something, but but the 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 actual. Uh, judicial decision was called time shifting yeah and if the content is available to you you are allowed to record it and view it at a later time assuming you paid for it at that certain time or it was a it was publicly available or whatever else and and that that's a judicial decision that's been in place since i believe the early 80s like 82 or 83 i want to say yeah it was it was very very early 80s because the whole advent of you know the, the advent of VCRs and stuff like that mm-hmm. was quite quite prevalent there, but the fact that they could uh, you know start duplicating them and stuff like that—that's when mm-hmm. the studios started getting nervous. Um, they're like, "Well, our intellectual property could be like the, just the very could the see very the time. first music video on MTV was video killed the radio star." Yeah, has music as you know it, as you knew it died in any way shape or form now you can argue you don't like current music i don't want to hear that argument because the people who are listening to music today that are 10 and 12 and 15 and 20 years old Mm -hmm. they may still appreciate the stuff from the 70s but they're not going man the music was so much better in the 70s they're going man the music was so much better in the 90s do you remember the beastie boys and and uh smash mouth like man they were just they just spoke to me in some mysterious ways man no, it always just the good stuff bubbles. Every up. time Shrek comes on, hey, yeah, <laughs> you're an all star, right? It, you know, if you lived through the era, there was a ton of crap. There was a ton of crap. I mean, but like the only thing that ever makes it through is the really good stuff. The really good stuff. You're, right. you're absolutely right. And so I've listened uh, to all of Metallica's albums and all of Pink Floyd. Yeah. There's some gold in those yeah. albums. Yeah. There's also seven other tracks. Right. Yes. <laughs> like, <There's... laughs> that I will actively skip every time they come on. Or like, yeah, eh. because like it can't be. Just get to Dark Side of the Moon. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Every era, there's some absolute gold, and every era, there's some absolute trash. There's probably yeah. more trash than gold. Obviously. Right. And, and and so you can't nitpick based on the the upper five percent of tracks yeah. that become like the only tracks played on the radio. Yeah. You have to take the era as a whole. And do you remember all the hair bands in the 80s? How many oh, of those do, do you listen to today? Some of them were, <laughs> even the ones that I remember liking, I go listen to them now. I'm like, how did I like this? It's terrible. This is kind of crappy. I think right. I, I, listened, I listened to a Def Leppard song today that I remember liking. I'm like, I don't know. This is kind of, this isn't, eh. I mean, this is, I, I still like pour some sugar. I mean, like, those are kind of fun songs. Right. There, there's songs like that. But, but Love Bites is just like, eh, you, uh, you know, it's just not, it just, it just doesn't gel with me anymore. Sorry. I'm just not an emotional teenager. You, 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 know? al- like, you also go back and you listen to some of the lyrics of the songs and the message that's being sent. And, uh, um, uh, better run, better run, faster than my bullet. Like, do you realize <laughs> that's like about a teenager killing his peers, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, it's a catchy tune, though. It's a catchy tune. I mean, just, just like Ring Around the Rosies about the Black Plague. But it's at your tune that kids sing, right? <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Actually, it was kind of it was kind of funny, uh, or not funny, but it's kind of neat. The hotel we stayed at, Fort Collins. Yeah, he's got a They had they had uh, a section uh, there where you can. Everybody had a record player in their hotel room, and you can go down to the lobby, and they had this library of records. You just go through and flip through them, and just take mm-hmm. whatever you want and go go up to your room and play them although it was already picked through I, it was there was a lot of garbage there was just a <laughs> lot of garbage it was like hey, paul anka was like who wants to go take paul anka up to the room come on but i'm like and the thing was they were not organized too oh is I this pink like the, from 92 no give me yeah. pink from 87 what the it's hell like, oh oh there's best of chicago all right let's go take that up i take it up there it's like that's not best of chicago yeah <laughs> that's like oh, what the hell is this i don't even know what this is yeah. All of a sudden, no. Journey plays. Like, ah! No, it wasn't even. It wasn't even Journey. It was completely something else. After but, hours karaoke. Yeah, but it was. It was fun. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, 
yeah, not a not a lot of people know we we are pretty big into karaoke. Yeah. I, I have a setup in my garage for just I have a setup in my garage. John has a setup in his garage. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we, we're we pretty hard into karaoke. Yeah. I, I have never felt so horrible in my throat the next day <laughs> than after a night of, of drinking uh, and karaoke. You, you go poker, arcade machine, karaoke. Those, yeah, those, are, the, like, those are the three steps. My throat is spent at the end of the evening. I wake up the next morning and I'm just like, ah, yep. Ah. It's like tongue of sandpaper. The back of my throat is like I swallowed half of the Sahara. It is just horrible. Novella Hub says Jeff wearing nothing but a guitar in the after show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to see that. Um, Nobody. By the way, I'm on day two of my diet because uh, the pandemic hit me just like everyone else, especially yeah. when I uh, went full time and got to drink beer for a living. So yeah. When the shirts yeah, when the shirts start stopped fitting correctly, I figured <laughs> figured it was time to change. <laughs> That's right. OnlyFans, yeah, you got to get on the OnlyFans for the karaoke gotta, action. Got to get on the OnlyFans, yeah. You know what? That might be a, an actual platform for an OnlyFans is uh, naked karaoke. Not even naked. I mean, not karaoke, me, just, but yeah, it's just karaoke. Just like craft computing karaoke. There we go. Craft does karaoke. Do I think I still have a clip. I think that uh, could totally be an OnlyFans. I still have I still have that clip from the not last year's Halloween, <laughs> but the one before, where you were out there no. singing. Hey, yeah, it was good. I still have it. I think I, I think oh, I put it on the halfway there. Oh. <laughs> that was great. That was a, that was that was great. That was great. Good times. Yep. And uh, what's funny between me and and Steve and John and 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 some of the other others that we do this with, um, and even the other group of friends that I do this with, because I've got uh, Mike and Perry and Cliff and, and, and like people no one else knows. Um, we all have what we consider our warm up song, which is our two shot mm-hmm. song. Mm-hmm. Then you have your three shot song and your four shot mm-hmm. song. And your four shot and three beer song. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I always have the end of the evening song for me is uh, the Cab Calloway Minnie the Moocher. That's a good because, one. Because because at that point my throat is so spent. Yeah. All I can do is like. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it's like, <laughs> just I just um, I just want to I just want to be deep and gravelly because that's all. White my wedding was. is one of my finishers. That's, there's still a lot of screaming in White Wedding. I don't think it, do it's that as a screaming, picture. but it's it's screaming in my vocal range. It's not yeah. super high. Start yeah. again. It, it's like it's yeah. there, and yeah. if you open your pipes up, you can still you can nail it. it. Yeah. Even yeah, yeah. It's not falsetto you, screaming. No, no, no. Right. It's it's like deep diaphragm. Open your throat, you'll be fine. Yeah, type of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I so. was in choir for four years. I know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe no. I, I'm actually kind of serious. Maybe that's an OnlyFans account. It could be. Is Craft Karaoke. <laughs> Subscribe to Craft Karaoke. Is it good for 500 a month? We'll get together once a month and, and throw out our be- our greatest hits. They will belt them out. Yeah. I got some good three doors down. Yeah. I think my, my, my karaoke collection is about... Up Dire to, Straits? Up to about like 8,000 songs I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at. Get on my level, Steve. Yeah. yeah. What are you? What are you at? Uh, I don't know that I can say on air because the MPA or the RIA may be listening. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's ten thousand. I can't remember. It's been a while. I, well, I what I what's the size of your karaoke library? I know it's. Hopefully, we will jump back in here. Hopefully. All right. Well, that was weird. <laughs> okay, we're back. Ah, are we? We're back. Yeah, are we? I, I, yeah, okay. we're streaming again. Okay. Okay, I can't tell, but um, on yeah. my side, I can't tell. Yeah, o- I'll OBS you. just died on me. All uh, right. Now I, I upgraded to twenty seven O today, and maybe that was a mistake. Okay. Um, but uh, hey, we're back. There we hey, are. We're back. Um. Anyway, Steve, you were saying you have like ten thousand songs. I, I, it's been a while since I looked uh, and counted, but because I. As I find stuff, I'll add it to my collection. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's like 10,000 around that. 
I'm gonna yeah. Say. Um, mine won't fit on a one terabyte. Oh, okay. Wow, you got that <laughs> lot. So, what do you what do you use as a player? Is what I'm asking. Uh oh, I gotta go Winamp. Yeah, that's exactly it. Winamp right. is so old, but it's the best. I've got Winamp. I've also got a um. Gosh, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it now, but I, I have uh, kind of like Winamp. It's a, it's a multi-platform open source re- right. read CDG, um, but it's built specifically for karaoke where you can mm-hmm. enter singers' names and have them queued up beforehand uh, right. with, with the songs f- that they want. I've tried a few of those, but the search algorithm and the and the – how fast it is the one i found is is not as lightning as fast is as really? fast as winamp yeah I'll, I'll see if i can okay. get you that one okay because i haven't looked in a, in a couple of years yeah i just constantly use winamp because it was and all the time i tried to find something better it never was as good so forrest is uh mentioning nickelback killed the stream that was probably it that's probably that was what it probably was it. we started we started talking about karaoke john got jealous did something how many Nickelback songs do you have for John? I have the entire discology for John. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Look at this photograph. <laughs> yep. Yep. We we got the full collection for him. Hopefully in flack. Uh, none of it's in flack because no, no one uh, has that kind of space. Yeah. Especially and when you get to the. I think my collection's at sixty thousand. Steve. And- I don't even know if I don't know if CDG works with Flack. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. I think it's an MP3. Yeah, yeah. Has MP3, to be MP3 or Wave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Peter says greetings from Australia. Hello. Wow. You must have just woke up, or has it been like afternoon? I don't know. I don't know what time. No, it is it's there. Like no, they're what? Yeah, no, they're, six they're like behind the... us, but the next day. Yeah. So they're like it's like six or seven behind us. So yeah, it's, it's like five o'clock. Okay. Five o'clock, four o'clock, then. something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I have a new program that I, I actually run on Pop OS. So mm-hmm. I have I have a dedicated machine with a one terabyte SSD that has the majority of my songs on it. <laughs> they wouldn't even fit. Um, uh, or no, I put I put a two ter- two terabyte spinner in it. That's right. I've, okay. I've got a I've got a, a one twenty eight M SATA. And a two terabyte spinner. And well, maybe I'll in, just have to into an Intel your Nook. collection. Yeah, I'll have to go copy yours then. Yep. Next time I come by. Yep. Hopefully, it's nice and organized. It is. It's okay, beautifully good. organized. Because I I had mine organized for the longest time, and then John's like, I got all these new songs. Just yeah, take it. And I dumped it in there. It's like, no, these are not this new songs. Crap. You just you just don't have the files. You just don't know correctly. what you have anymore. <laughs> you just don't know what you have in there. Yeah. And I went through like took me like hours to resort them and delete duplicates and then Yeah, I guess uh, it says one PM in Western Australia. So yeah, about four or five. I was I was right. Okay. All right. Okay, it's good. Yeah. Four or five on on the East Coast. Yeah, three PM here, Thursday in Australia. Yeah, like I said, you're like six hours behind us, but the next day. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we got Netherlands now. What does to, what does tomorrow bring? Should I just stay in bed? That's what I want to know. Yeah. What's the yeah? <laughs> Can you guys be like my canary in the coal mine? All right. I'm gonna open up my last beer. All right. Mm, I'm gonna wait to the don't... after party. I, we got six minutes that's, to uh, that's, to the after that's party. That's fine. Should yeah. we go through the last two stories? Then? Uh, we might as well touch on them. We can we can go real quick. Um. So this one actually excited me a lot. Yeah. And it's kind of nice because it is a local business that yes, we have known and love for a while. Yep. Uh, so Dark Horse Comics. Uh, what's funny is a lot of people know Dark Horse Comics, but they don't realize that they have two offices. One is in Shanghai. The other is in Oregon. Milwaukee, Oregon. It's in Milwaukee, which is, Oregon. Which is, which is a suburb of Portland. But. Yes. Um, anyway, it's about 40 minutes from both Steve and me. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Dark Horse I've Comics. To, I've been there several times. Yes. Actually. Yeah. Uh, Dark Horse Comics is starting a gaming and digital entertainment division. Yeah. Uh, partially to compete with like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but also to get into the video game and TV and movie space. Right. Um, and uh, for those who don't know, or might, might like, like, oh, I recognize Dark Horse Comics. Who do they have? Um, let's just go down the list. Hellboy, Sin City, 300, Umbrella Academy, Polar, Lady Killer, Emily the Strains, uh, Us- Usagi, uh, Yo- uh Yojimbo. Yojimbo. Yeah, you, there we go. And Resident Alien. Which, which, uh, Alan Turdick just had that 
show that came out, which yes. is Resident Evil. It's based on that comic. Yeah. Yes. Um. So yeah, like they're not small potatoes by any means. No. Uh, I mean, I mean, you say Sin City 300 and Hellboy. It's like, oh yeah, we're yeah. we're in the big leagues now. Yeah. I think they were the original Aliens versus Predator too. They had yes, the they were. Uh, Alien versus Predator comic that first came out. Uh, that was Dark Horse Comics. Yep. Which already has plenty of games from them. But, right. Yeah, they're starting they're starting up a, a gaming studio aiming for all platforms. They're going PC, console, mobile, all mm-hmm. those type of things. Um I think right now they're still they haven't well, they obviously have not announced anything, but we know their library and uh they're full of a lot of IPs that people know and love. And I think they're going to go like um they want they want to do AAA type stuff, they're not going indie or anything. Mm-hmm. So they'll probably there's some their their plan basically is some in house some external right uh, right now they are sense. currently shopping different studios and developers and mm-hmm. looking for who can like bring the visions that we have to life right. who who can take who can take the stories and the concepts and 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 really the universe and yeah. and bring it to these different digital media be it video games or TV shows or movies or whatever else. So this is a pretty big venture for Dark Horse. It is. And I'm excited to see what happens to it because, uh, well, one, it's in our backyard, and that's right. great, terrific, and I love it. But I like a lot of the IPs too. So right. it would be great to see some games or, or anything. Um, I mean, we've seen lots of movies, and I think there was a Hellboy game at one point in time. I know There it was a Hellboy game. God, I want to say like 2006. It was yeah. like in between the couple of movies that they did. Right. Um, but uh, Sin City, if you want to talk about like a mm. rich, deep that environment awesome. that you can dive into with a very distinct visual style and like, right. oh god, yes, give me a give me a Sin City game. Something that kind of give me a Sin like City RPG the, mystery. The dark grittiness of Sin City that kind of had the mechanics of like uh, Alien Noir. No, Alien Noir. Okay. Something because you're, that could you're be good dark, too. dark, gritty, noir yeah. detective type stuff. Yeah, with some action elements in there mixed in. Okay, would be I I awesome. could definitely see that. I would uh, I would love something like that. Right. When I hear uh, Sin City, I actually go more um, Disco Elysium. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. But right. that's that's more adventure. It's more type adventure, style. point yeah. and click RPG mm. kind of style, um, which I think could still very much work. Um, it could, but you could also go pure RPG. I mean, look at, mm-hmm. look at the South Park games. Oh yeah. Look at the fractured the hole like and, and, uh, gosh, what was the other one? The other, I don't game. know if it would be, it would be good turn base. I think Stick it would be more, yeah. I think it would be more like if you did something like, like fallout where it was the choice you can do turn base or full action or whatever you want to do. <laughs> as long as they're turn base, that's fine. Or as long as they're, uh, uh, decision based. That's fine. yeah. There's some there's some good RPG elements into yeah. there with this, some decision based going on. That would be fun. Uh, Dark Horse also had the Dark Empire Star Wars series. That's true. I Boy, that's about going that. way back. That's going way back. Papa, way to bring that one up. Yeah, that's great. I doubt that they'd be able to do it now. There's no right. way they did. There's no way. Well, actually, if they still held the contract with LucasArts, that contract would still be active. That's true, so, but but Lucas Arts is also trying to spin up their own gaming with they with are, but the Star a, Wars a stuff. company purchase does not invalidate a previous copyright license. Mm. Depends if they sold it or not. Depend, Who knows? It, it it depends on if the um on what the uh, terms of the contract were. If, Correct. If if the originator or the uh, or the licensee could cease the terms at any moment or for whatever reason or if there was a time length to the agreement or mm-hmm. like there's a lot of, of nullifiers yeah. there yeah. but yeah yeah that'd be cool yeah it would be cool got a dark empire video game oh. <laughs> 1313 might actually live oh that would be awesome i was looking forward to 1313 i i totally was, I was so bummed and, when they canceled it right uh I think what we got instead of 1313 was the Mandalorian, and I really can't complain about that trade. No, that was really good. But doesn't mean I still don't want the game. Yeah. 
like the Star Wars universe is so deep and so complex and and whatnot. And we Especially know that outside the movies. I mean, you, you had the you had the comics and you had the God. novel series. You had all kinds of stuff that were really great. That because there was a, I mean, people don't remember between um, Empire or not Empire between Return of the Jedi and Phantom Menace. There was a huge gap of time where mm-hmm. nothing but comics and books right. were released. There were seventeen years. Yeah, between them. that was it. And there's a huge history right there. Yeah. And that's well, that's where a lot of the uh, Knights of the Old Republic stuff came out. Mm-hmm. We got like yeah the the the. the uh, Do you remember all, the yeah. early two thousands as a Star Wars fan as far as video games goes? Holy crap! Oh yeah, man, that was just the golden age. Of... Mm-hmm. I mean, the seventies were obviously the golden age for Star Wars, um, and they've been trying to recapture that ever since. And there's been yeah. this renewed liking of the prequels in spite of the horrible dialogue and and story decisions that that were made on it oh yeah the the oh, yeah. current the current sentiment is that the 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 sequels are absolute garbage of course and and while i fall somewhere in the yeah the stories were not that good uh the storytelling was still fine and i'm not in charge of the story so mm. The movies were good, even if they didn't meet the expectations that I had for the universe. Right. Um, so it's, you know, I'm, I'm I'm kind of somewhere in the middle on the sequels. But if you want to talk about, like, the deep, rich, like, get into the nitty gritty of Star Wars, not like the Luke Skywalkers of the world, but like the Car- the Kyle Katarns of the world. Yeah. Um, yes. And, and whatnot. I mean, there are so many of those type stories that could be told I, in the universe, in canon. Um, yeah. I absolutely that. love the the Knights of the Old Republic story mm-hmm. and, and the game that went with it. Both one and two uh, were just wonderful. Yep. Uh, I mean, they were they were like one of those because it was completely removed from. I mean, it was still in the same universe, yep. but it was completely removed from everything that we knew. Right. Uh, so it can it can. It's what branch made Rogue off. One so great. Yeah. Is that well, it's think, in the uh, universe. I mean, Rogue One had a particular outcome that you knew was going to happen. You knew the outcome would happen. You knew eventually that... the story behind it was completely open. You can do what you want with it, basically. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you... But you do the outcome, but just like Titanic, it's still made for a fantastic story. Yes, of course, of course, And, and And the thing is, is that that particular story was so far removed from the the Jedi and the Luke Skywalkers Mm -hmm. and the Anakin Skywalkers and the Obi-Wan Kenobis of the universe. Yeah. That it was just a Jen Erso. And it was, you can, you can tell a good story. And that's why I think the Mandalorian was a huge success too, because you were in a familiar setting, but with a character who was unremarkable, but yet still remarkable. Exactly. Yeah. It was great. And, and, and familiar yet different. And, and that's what we got with the dark, the, with the Dark Forces franchise, yeah. that's what we got with uh, uh, the uh, uh, Republic Soldier. Gosh, what's the uh... Oh, Republic Commando. Commando, thank you, Republic yeah. Commando franchise. Yeah, that that's too. what we yeah. got with the Battlefront franchise. That's what we got yeah. with all of these different things uh, in the late '90s and early 2000s, up to about mm-hmm. 2006, and then all of a sudden, like the IP just kind of like dried up. Yeah, and. We haven't gotten a good thing since then, and you can say what you want uh, about yeah. uh, about the new one, about the EA Jedi game. Um, I, oh, I, I I have it, but I haven't played it. I, I really don't have. Yeah, it I'm, it. I'm 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 also. I'm, I heard it's decent, but I haven't tried it. Yeah, I've I've heard it's decent, but I from from looking back at. And I think we'll end with this because I don't know if we mentioned it last week, but uh, we Jedi still Outcast. Got one story. Oh, oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> but Jedi Outcast uh, last week had a mod that was announced that they're getting RTX lighting mm. in, into Jedi Outcast. I'm that's gonna play awesome. through the whole damn thing. Here. I would play the heck out of this. Holy to get crap! RTX lighting. Yes, right? I would. Um, so, like, breathing new life into like that game. But think about yeah. the depth of that game. And the yeah. mechanics and the animations yeah. and everything that went into that game and how big the community was and kind of still is. Like right. I've, I've said this a couple times, Masassi.net, which was the largest mod community mm-hmm. in the Jedi Outcast uh, day, mm-hmm. still exists and is still active as a website. Oh yeah, completely. It's been 
20 years. I, I have a maximum PC article that says this is our new benchmark title. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. Um, from 2001. Like yeah. I have that article. Um, and I just don't feel that with the, the modern Star Wars games. I, I, yeah. I just don't get that. So. Yeah, no, there hasn't been a really good. I mean, like I said, I have not tried. It's uh, someone said Fallen Order. I guess it's Fallen Order. Fallen Order. Uh, I haven't yeah. tried it. I, I own yeah. it, but I have not gone through it yet. I want to, and I probably eventually will. But I'll eventually. I'll, I haven't even picked it up yet because honestly, thirty dollars to me to play through yeah. the story just still wasn't good the, enough. The last... I'm, I'm waiting for the nine ninety nine or free on EA Games or Origin even or even Force Awakens was the first not the second one the second was not that great but the oh, first force one was, unleashed force unleashed yeah yeah, yeah. force unleashed uh force unleashed uh that one was the first one was was pretty good mm -hmm. the second one was like not so not so much the, but the, the, that was that was the last one that i actually enjoyed playing yes i i will agree there the the problem with force unleashed is a problem that i see with a lot of modern games that want to get too far into the storytelling and and the gameplay is secondary so 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 flat it, it, it is flat. so entirely flat and so entirely mm -hmm. rigid that there's nothing you can do other than a single linear path there's nothing you can do other than right um and when it came to the boss fights it was nothing more than tomb raider than hit a right. at this particular point to trigger the next cutscene. hit x yeah. when it says x hit y when it says y uh, i and it's, I have it's the most lazy game development you can possibly deliver to my screen where you're we've... trying to, you're trying to play a movie with interactive right. elements and i'm right. sorry I'm not a buyer. Yeah. I think I've heard like at least five times in the last maybe 10 years of a rumor of a uh, open world Star Wars game. Like I've a heard GTA. it. Yeah. I've heard it. I've never seen it. Right. But I've heard it. And I think that's what a lot of people kind of want is something like that would be. I mean, they had yeah. they had the Star Wars Online, which was probably the closest they ever came to that. Right. Well, it was kind of fun at the beginning, and I think they, they ended up tweaking it severely. I I think if they tried to go the direction of a Red Dead Redemption 2 game. Mm -hmm. of With a good story, but open world? With a good story, but open world. Side quests and stuff I like think that. I think that would be kill. amazing. Of course. Well, I you, think it... Okay, so The Mandalorian is a Western. That's a, yeah, it's a spaghetti western. At its, at its at its core, it's a western. Right. Uh, even even yeah, it's it's which it's, is it's, what it's, makes it so good. So, <laughs> just take that setting and and make something like it. You know, you yeah. don't have to obviously copy like, it, but the, it's the, totally the possible. The term spaghetti western is it comes because we all know what western is, and we want to be fed that. If I'm watching yeah. a western, if I'm watching a John Wayne or a you know that style movie. This is the art direction. This is the storytelling. This is the scenery that I want to see. Actually, Spaghetti Western came from the uh, Italians that made a bunch of yeah. like pulpy Western movies. Right. So that's what, that, like, but, like real but, cheesy but, Western movies. But based on the exact stereotypes that yes. we want yes. in our Western movies. Right, right, right. Um, so I was right. Yeah, Just, you were right. But yeah. the spaghetti came from from Italy. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it still works. Right. Like it does. Like Mandalorian is a spaghetti Western. It's everything it that I want in it a Western is. and a Star Wars story. The, the, the Give filming me more and the of framing. That. Yes. It's it's exactly yes. If if we had something like that, that would be great. I would love that. Yeah. G give me more of that and less of, of Tomb Raider press A to advance the next cutscene. Right. Please. Right. Give, yeah. give me some diversity. Give me some choice in yeah. in a world that is supposed to be black and white, good and evil, light versus dark. Right. Let me choose a path. That's, and and yeah, that, that's great. something that uh, not even Jedi Outcast, but you look back to uh, right. Dark Forces 2 Jedi right. Knight, which was Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. Right. They, they did the 1-2-2 two, two trick. Um that's something that Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight did so incredibly well mm -hmm. is you actually got a different storyline and different game mechanics depending on the decisions that you made. Right. Absolutely. And that's why... They In its very art. simplest terms, by the way. Right. But it was still fun. I mean, it was great. Great yeah. gameplay well, and great story. It was 97. What did you want for complexity? Mass Effect? <laughs> <laughs> 
But still, it's still fun, though. Right. I mean, I remember playing through that twice just to get, like, the oh, different God, gameplay yeah. values and stuff like that. It was so much fun. And you ever achieve Uber Jedi where you're, like, perfectly balanced? Oh, you get lightning <laughs> and healing? Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, you're unstoppable. <laughs> Uh, speaking of game mechanics, we do have one more story to get to one before more quick we call story. this a night, and that is yes. the Steam or Valve Next Fest. That's right. So this is the renaming of basically their, uh, I guess they, used, they call it the, um, oh, what did they call it before? It was the Games Festival or something like that? Yeah, they yeah, had the a Steam Summer Games game Fest. Festival. Yeah. yeah, the Game Fest. And basically what it is, is they take the upcoming indie games uh, that are coming to Steam, and they do just a huge feature on them uh, where people can come in, watch live streams, uh, talk to the developers, play with the developers, download demos, uh, and play and, and just look at all the upcoming games that you can um, – that are, that are just coming out on Steam. It's Salmon Max. Right. There's a virtual Salmon Max that's coming out. So it's like so like when we went to PAX and there's that whole indie area where we can go around and play. Yeah, those indie village. Things. Yeah, indie village. This is basically that in a virtual sense. Yeah. Um, so you can go in there and 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 look at all the different types of games they have: adventure games, role playing games, puzzle games, platformer games, strategy games, VR games. Yeah. Uh, and it's coming this month. It's um, I believe June, June 16th to the yeah. 22nd. Yeah probably going to be a sale along with it too um it seems like it's going to be because i remember last year really enjoying checking a lot of stuff out so this year it's going to be a lot of the same thing but the dates have been announced and that's when it's going to happen june 16th to june 22nd yep very cool um i'm actually just excited for salmon max now yes <laughs> Anyway, uh, any closing thoughts? Anything to uh, um, go to the order? I, when I said that that Avery beer was dangerous, uh huh, it's absolutely dangerous. <laughs> um. <laughs> Dropping Dimes was quite good. Uh, was I good? will say both the beers were good tonight. Um, I think Damien could have been a little bit better if I got a little bit, a little bit more of the darker flavors. Right. It was it was still floating way too much towards bready pilsner and and pale ale right. that i didn't get the roast and the brown sugar and the malt and the the darker flavors that the beer was colored as and so it kind of left me like wanting more even though it was like still satisfying um and then the dropping dimes that's just just phenomenal that's a fruit salad in an ipa right. glass oh man it was wonderful oh speaking of which i gotta say i ended up going uh 35 miles outside of uh, uh, Boulder mm -hmm. just to hit this small mountain town in Colorado to go to this uh, brewery called um, Knotted Roots, I think. It was, yes, Knotted Roots. On a rec recommendation from a brewer I talked to, and they had some of the best uh, jammy sours I've had in a long time. Nice. It was like this pineapple tropical. Great. It was just this, this amalgam of different fruits that was absolutely <laughs> delicious. I brought a four pack back. I, I I have one that you're gonna have to try with John. That is okay. literally like blueberry cobbler. Oh, it is man. amazing. I mean, I feel kind of bad because jammy sours. I I can't really condone it as being a beer, but they taste yeah, good. You're right. They taste right. good. It's, it, it's, it's hard an, to call this one a beer, even though it's it like eight percent. Like, but they are good. They are, they are dynamite. good. Yeah. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. It is Sorry time for to Jeremy end. Jeremy Clarkson. Thank you so much for watching Talking Heads episode one hundred eighty six. You can watch us every Wednesday night right here on YouTube on Craft Computing eight p.m. Pacific time. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Follow Steve into Valhalla. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to join the after party, which will be starting here in probably about 10 minutes or so, yep. think about joining the Patreon or float plane. Links are down in the video description and you help me keep the lights on around here while getting access to the discord. Anyway, Good night, everybody. this has been a lot of fun. And as always, <laughs>